Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We are going to cross-examine, I think that's what it was, I don't remember terms, uh, Gina's testimony about what happened in McGillid. I brick maker Cove in the cabin, the omnibus the whole time. And you were hiding in the cabin at the time as well, weren't you, Miss Lestrade? If I remember rightly, in the storage compartment underneath one of the seats. Yeah, that's right. It's pitch black under there, so you can't see nothing at all. Now, in your testimony two months ago, I feel certain that you claimed Miss McGilded was the sole passenger, did you not? False testimony, my lord. That's... that's what you told me I had to say. But it's important that you tell us the truth now. Were Mc Mr. McGilded and the victim acquaintances? I don't know. But I do hear him talking a lot. What were they talking about? Well, I couldn't hear too well, but if I had to say... I think it was about money or something. They kept talking about buying and not buying. Hmm, perhaps business dealings of some kind. Well, anyway, they got louder and louder. It started to sound like a pop fight. I was pretty scared by then. I heard hardly dared to breathe, and then, all of a sudden, I heard a noise like someone keeling over on the floor. It was booming loud and all. And I believe you let out an involuntary scream. Yeah. That's what gave me away. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. How you doing, dude? Question, do you have any of the Sanrio amiibos? Do you want any of the Sanrio items? Because I can buy it and send it to you. Was the disc you saw this disc? Yeah, I reckon it probably was. It was right next to the cove lying on the floor. You don't want it? Okay. Just wondering, because I, I didn't realize that I didn't um, scan in the amiibo cards before, so I was like, wait, where's all my Sanrio furniture? So I have to scan them all in. Could this disc have belonged to the victim pops? I don't know, but Magilda picked it up pretty smartish. And then he sat, under, sat the cove with the knife in his belly up on the seat. What did he say to you at that time? He told me not to say a word about what I've seen or heard to no one. About the disc and all. I was dead scared. The way he was looking at me, I thought... If I didn't go along with it, I'd get stuck with that knife too. Hmm. Then he started asking me a load of questions. Like what my name was and where I lived and that. He asked me about being a diver too. But after a while, what had happened in the carriage was noticed. Yeah, that's right. First there was a kind of rapping noise. I think that's what the last word was. Uh, press. There were two gentlemen occupying the seats on the roof deck, I believe. That's right. They must have looked down through the skylight and noticed the cove with the knife in his guts. When they screamed, the driver pulled up the horses and McGill got me at, got me out of sight. Out of sight? Where? Back under the seat where I started off. Once the carriage came to an halt, the two coves from the roof ran off to fetch the slops. If they immediately left to fetch the police, it would appear they were entirely unrelated to the incident. Hmm. So that left McGilded, the driver, and you still at the scene. Yeah, only the driver didn't know I was there because I was under the seat. I heard the cabin door open and a voice from outside. The driver, yes. He also testified in the trial, I believe. A fellow who went by the name of Beppo, if memory serves. What did McGilded and the driver say to each other? I don't know what happened and stuff like that, mainly. That's when McGilded slipped the driver, so I'm tend to do a little bit of it. Frame drops? Oh, really? I'm sorry. Internet's been weird today. Even for my work computer, like... 
I was streaming during a meeting, yeah, and like it kept freezing up, and I was like, no. But we finished the meeting quickly, so it's all good. The pawn shop obviously being Windbanks on Baker Street. Just a moment, console. Do, do you mean to tell me that the driver gave false testimony in that trial as well? Perhaps the excursion to the pawnbroker slipped his mind when he was in the stand. Indeed, Lord Van Zeeks. McGillard took off his coat and gave it to the driver. He folded it up all careful like before I handed it over. When I saw him do that, I remember thinking, that coat and what's in it gotta be worth a few bo bob. Everyone's a liar, gasp. I know, surprising. Yes, Gina was sure the disc must be worth than Mr. Windebank was suggesting, wasn't she? I remember her quibbling with him over the price that afternoon at the pawnbrokery. That's some serious frame drops. Is it really? I didn't change any settings and all that. I think internet around my neighborhood today is just weird. Also, hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. If you boob. That's what I read of. I don't I didn't know she was gonna say Bob. Oh well. Driver looked pretty happy when Miss McGilda flashed some brass in his face. He went running off at a lick. Then the bulk trotter called to me and told me to come out from the drag's cabin. Don't mean not to say it's this. <gasps> Threatened you how exactly? Told me I'd only be able to scop if I did exactly what he said. Which included giving false testimony in court two months ago? Yeah, that's it. There was one other thing he said. Which was? He told me I'd have to hang on to the ticket from the pawn shop and make sure not to lose it. The ticket? Well, I never. Said that if you didn't show up to get the ticket off me before two months passed. I had to go to the pawn shop and pay the money to keep it in log to stop it from being forfeited. He left me with some brass to pay for it. But really, why on earth would Miss McGillard have done such a thing? Depositing his overcoat with a pawnbroker before the arrival of the police, it makes no sense at all. There would seem to be only one logical explanation, my lord. What McGillard had the driver deposit at Windbanks was something he didn't want the police to see. Something very important that he needed to hide at all costs. Anyway, after that, he let him go, so I liked it before the copper showed up. Well done, Gina. It can't have been easy to tell the truth like that. Jenny's really put her faith in you, Runo. Yes, and to thank her, she'll have to face a charge of perjury once this trial's over. So I need to use the time we have now to get as much information out of her as possible. It's time to really go for it. Press her on every statement. I did. I suppose I should. Oh, and another thing. What's that? Take a look at those two. Isn't it strange that they've been whispering to each other the entire time? Yes, that is strange. It looks like they're having a secret discussion about something. Is is Gregson also part of the the scam? Oh my is he not as as legit as I thought he was? I'm not sure I'm completely comfortable with that. I wonder if there's anything I could do about it. Oh my goodness. Well, I did press her on every statement. Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Um do I have to press again and this time they'll, um, whatchamacallit? This time they'll actually, um, have reactions? Because this is the omnibus murder thing. Fourth one insufficient evidence. I guess I'm gonna have to press again. You're hiding in the cabin. Mm, storage cart room. Okay. I, I want to skip everything, but I have to be careful about skipping because now I have to look out for um, reactions. In Spanish, mata means kill, does it? Ooh. Oh, we never learned the, the word to kill in Spanish class. Ah. 
Wait, is that why matadors are called matadors? Because they they kill the bulls? Sounds like a proper fight. Scared by them. Noise I see them come get on the floor. Bald hair screen. Matador means killer. Oh! Matador is killer. And Burrito is a, a baby donkey or a small donkey. <laughs> killer toast. No, I'm not a killer. The disc you saw, this disc. Um, I think it probably was. It was right next to a coal flying on the floor. So, do I present the disc on this statement then? But they're like, mm, picked a pretty smart knife in the belly in the seat. What did he say to you at that time? Told me not to say a word. Got the disc and all, that scared, was looking at me, but didn't go along with it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Ask me a little questions, what my name was, where I lived. See, the thing is, I already pressed all these statements and they didn't react. I'll still do it anyway. Wait, hmm. Saw that disc on the floor. Um. Just press it, just press, just press. What? Oh. I was like, what happened to the screen? They immediately live in flesh of police. They were not involved. The driver. Beppo! They're not giving any other different reactions. Me not to snitch. Take it from the pawn shop. Pay the money, but she didn't pay the money. She took the thing out. So do I? Ex do I present the ticket? It seemed to be the only logical explanation. Gillian had to drive a deposit. Something didn't seem by the police. Something very important he needed to hide at all costs. Because it's not like we have a music disc to, um, a music box to play the disc on. You can feel the perfect thing you. So we need to use the time we have now. Press her I did, press her on name statement, and woo, don't you think it's suspicious that they're talking to each other? Yeah. If there's anything I can do. Okay, um. Saw that disc on the floor. I'm gonna present a disc here to be like, are you sure it's this disc? Was there another or something? Well, we know that the other object was the box, so maybe. Presenting the disc here is uh, useless, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Where's the disc? Nope, nope, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Stop, stop, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. I didn't want to sit through that whole thing. I uh, saw that disc on the floor. Run scream, Peru, Gillis run the pound shop about. Not to say nothing, but it, okay. Um, I'm gonna have to use the walkthrough again because I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Wait, what? 
You want to press every statement to hear everything you can. Point out the people pursue them. What? I. You just have to. What? Whoops. Do I just have to bother them? Is there something you'd like to share with the court, Inspector Gregson and Mr. Graydon? Inspector! Mr. Graydon! What? Blimey, you trying to give me a heart attack? You've been whispering to each other for quite some time now. Oh, so that's all I had to do. I just had to examine them. Okay, that was not clear. I thought they would react to one of the statements. Tell us, what is the discussion about? Discussion? With this fellow? Pull the other one, sunshine. You think I've got anything to say with a shady jump like this? And I have nothing to say to this uncouth detective after he deprived me of that disc that was rightfully mine. But they've clearly been talking the entire time I've been cross-examining Gina. It's as if they've been negotiating. Thank you, Miss Lestrade. Thank you, Council. I've heard enough. I believe we now have a reasonable understanding of what actually transpired on the omnibus. It would appear on that night two months ago, a negotiation was taking place on the omnibus. A negotiation concerning this disc, however, matters did not run smoothly. When the parties involved began to quarrel over price, Mr. McGill took what he wanted by force. At the expense of the other man's life. Which proves my point, the disc is clearly extremely valuable in some way. Although I don't understand why as yet. And two days ago, precisely two months after the omnibus incident, McGilded's coat and its contents were due to be forfeited. I don't know what I should do with the ticket. I mean, the cove died right after his trial. I knew that. So you decided you would try to claim the articles as your own? Well, why not, eh? They were only gonna be forfeited. Why shouldn't I have gotten? Anyway, you can't blame me for thinking about it. Thinking about- thinking ain't no crime. Miss Lestrade, it would appear Mr. McGilded was prepared to kill in order to take possession of this disc. Do you know why that would be? Eh? I ain't got a clue. Well, I reckon it must be worth a fair bit of brass. He was probably gonna sell it. And you can't blame me for thinking that. Thinking ain't no crime. Hmm. Lord! The evidence your lordship requested has been located and is ready for the court's inspection, sir. The box! Poofy toast. Poof, poof, poof. <laughs> the mysterious little box deposited by McGilda two months ago. There's no doubt in my mind that it's a key piece in this far reaching puzzle. Ticka, 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 to be continued. Wow, there wasn't, there really wasn't much, that much left in the last part. I probably could have finished it all last time, but I had a killer headache. So it's good that I'm doing this now. But <clears throat> this is an ordinary box. It's wrapped outside with a bow. So this is the article in question, is it? The small box deposited with the pawnbroker by Mr. McGilder two months ago. And on the night of Mr. Windbank's murder, the only item on the shelves that was touched by whoever broke into the shop. Quick, quick, let's open it and see what's inside. <gasps> a music box. Good gracious, this is no ordinary box, it seems. Wow, although in truth, I had an inkling that might be the case. 
it would appear that the box houses a miniature music box movement. Then, is it too much to expect? I think it would be reasonable to assume that it is a device for the playback of this disc, my lord. But the disc looks so... well, how big is the box? Because the disc looks pretty big. So, here we have the means to play back Mr. McGilded's disc, deposited at Windbags at much the same time. Not strictly correct, my lord. It was not Mr. McGilded's disc. It was the disc of his victim in the omnibus. But why? For heaven's sake! Are we to understand that the brickmaker was trying to sell this music box disc to Mr. McGilded? I believe the answer will become clear if we listen to the music on the disc, my lord. Yes, very well. Let the court now listen to this curious disc I lost. Oh, let me get my headphones for this, because um, I was like, oh, let's not put pressure on my head today. Pixel toast toast. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be pixely. Wait, my lord. Good grief. What is the meaning of this, Inspector? The music box and the disc are, um... Well, they're unrelated to the case. No, no need to spoil the somber atmosphere in the courtroom with some silly bit of music. This disc may very well have motivated the culprit in this case to commit murder. Clearly there's every chance that it's fundamentally important to understanding what happens. The prosecution has no objection. But, but no! That piece of evidence is police property now! You can't- Clearly Scotland Yard has some vested interest here. But it is policy of this prosecutor to leave no avenues unexplored. And you, Inspector, have no jurisdiction here to prevent that from happening. Gah! What are you trying to hide, Gregson? No for the delays, please play the disc. Oh, it fits. It's Morse code! Baby shark do 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 Baby shark do 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 Baby shark do do Baby shark What on earth? That's certainly not what I would call music. Now that's what I call music! Volume 38. No. It's just the same note playing over and over again in an irregular sequence. Hmm. <laughs> it's Morse code, guys. Mr. Graydon? This, this really is priceless. After all that, the music box is broken. Broken? It, it can't be, can it? I wonder who could understand it, hmm? I know, it's like, hmm, are there any communications officers around? I mean, like, hmm. Well, obviously. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. If the officer sent to fetch it didn't drop it on the way back to the courtroom. Well, with much regret. I feel the court must accept that this music box offers little in the way of clues. No, it's Morse code, guys. Morse code. Are you ready to move on, counsel? Come on! Yes, alright, it does sound as though it's completely broken, but is it? No! Could this music emanated from a music box possibly be a new clue? It is! It's Morse code, guys! I believe that it could be relevant, my lord. Now I'll take my headphones off. Good lord, but, but how can it be? It's an abomination, counsel. Mere noise. I fail to see how it could have any meaning whatsoever. It does sound strange, I agree. But there's one thing bothering me. When was Morse code invented? Um, good question. Let's look it up. Morse code. Uh, it was invented by Samuel Morse. Mm, but when did it happen? Early 19th century. So, early 1800s. But when did Morse 
deliver, I mean, not deliver, develop his version. Hmm. I mean, this Wikipedia page is saying like around 1830s, but this game right now is 1817, I think, so. While Graydon stands there chortling victoriously, the inspector beside him has a rather telling expression on his face. Yo, I think um, Graydon is also, maybe he's, that's how they're getting, um, that's how they're getting messages out from Great Britain's um, intelligence and whatever, because uh, Eggert, not Eggert, Sulky Skulkin is a communications officer. And wow, my hair's crazy. And um, Graydon's helping him get, get secrets and stuff. It's as if Greg, not Graydon, Gregson. Graydon is sulky skulkin. It's as if Gregson recognizes sound as if he's familiar with it somehow. And that's making him appear extremely on edge. If that's the stance of the defense, my Nipponese friend, answer me this. Use it to pick up lady. <laughs> oh? Playing again, right when I took my headphones off. Just what relevance do you propose this woeful chiming has on this case? It's the defense's belief that the sound emanating from this music box is not supposed to be music. Just because this is a music box, it doesn't necessarily mean the sounds we're hearing are music. The hills are alive with the sounds of music. Look at that. The smile vanished from Graydon's lips as soon as I said it. I'm on the right lines here. I must be. Hehe, <laughs> making deductions based on how people react to what you say. You're acting just like Hurley, Bruno. Yeah. The sounds we're hearing aren't necessarily music. Well, now that you've told us what they are not. I'm sure the court would like to hear what they are. Do enlighten us, my Nipponese friend. Well, um... Surely you have an idea in mind, because if not... It will be the death of your ill-formed arguments. Exactly. The music box is clearly broken. Refusing to accept that fact is pure foolishness. They've got me. I don't know what the answer is. Yet. Um, Reno. I've just examined the music box very thoroughly. And I'm fairly certain that it's not broken at all. Really? Really? The way it's made, it can only produce a single note anyway. Thank you, Iris. There's a whole section that's covered up by the paper though. Is that still being like struck? I guess if it's on the underside. All right, well, if the music box isn't broken, it must mean that the sounds it's producing have some significance that isn't musical. Could it be? Is that what these sounds are? Something's just struck me, Runo. I feel like I recently, in the past few hours even, I've heard another sound very much like the one this music box makes. Yes, it's a familiar sound. Actually, Iris, I was just thinking exactly the same thing. I'm going to have to press the defense for an answer. If your assertion is that the sound produced by this music box is not in fact music at all, then what the devil is it, counsel? All the evidence we've seen so far, all the testimony we've heard, it's all pointing to one single answer now. The prosecution demands that my learned Nipponese friend presents proof now. What's half of twice the double of one third triple the amount of half the half of two? What? <laughs> I was like, hey, Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. 
Half the half it of two is one. Half of one is 0.5. One third triple the triple one. It's one. <laughs> I think. Wait, twice the double. Oh no, twice the double. Double of one is two. Twice is four. So it's two. Your answer is two. I would think things are good. Tomorrow's Friday, and then I have a- I should have a slow work week next week, so I'm looking forward to that. And my Animal Crossing Island is coming along beautifully, which I'm very happy about. I just need to figure out how to decorate, like, my paths and, like, um, split up the flowers, and I think I'm pretty much done. Yeah. I didn't think you'd actually try to figure it out. I was making it up as I was typing it. I like math. I like math puzzles, so I will try to solve it as best I can. Never took physics, though. Mm. Tangible proof of this latest wild speculation. Speaking of, did you visit my island? No, I'm so sorry. I didn't visit it yet. I'm just so focused on, like, finishing my- completing my island. I haven't even done um, any Happy Home Paradise after I did it that one time on stream. And I've been meaning to go back so I could get more furniture and stuff, but I haven't. I hated math. I took physics 12th grade. I blocked out the pain. I didn't take a science in 12th grade, that's why I didn't do physics. Because I completed all of my science requirements in junior year. Alright then. This could be the best chance I'm going to get to fight back in this trial. And if I'm right, it's going to join all the dots together. The evidence that explains the true nature of the sounds of this music box disc is... List charge, photograph, no signs of trauma. Hound of Baskervilles. Is it the newspaper? But this doesn't show, um, which contains an article about government secrets being leaked to foreign agencies. I'm good. I'm just gonna present this. Today's paper council. Oh, am I wrong? I never took chemistry. That's my main claim to fame. I took chemistry and people were like, oh, if you like math, you like chemistry. I freaking hated chemistry. It was not, chemistry was mostly memorization, but math is more about solving, um, solving equations. So I didn't like chemistry. Ugh. And biology was hard, but biology was interesting because then I was like, I'm actually learning about how like our bodies work, the different like systems working in our body to keep us alive and functioning. That was interesting. The headline is pawnbroker purchase and pick plus plunder. Holly supportive of your cause. Ah, uh, no, my lord. I was hoping you'd look at the little further down the page. Hmm? Oh. Sorry about that, that was my dad. <laughs> Just barging in here, thanks a lot. Uh, I liked math in school, solving problems as well, but not much in my adult years, yeah. 
Mr. Toast. <laughs> <sighs> okay, further down. Those three mole classified secrets may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. Yes, this is a very serious matter being investigated at the highest level, I understand. I have heard that international transmissions along supposedly secure lines are somehow being intercepted. And leaked to various other countries. And presumably, those transmissions are in the form of wire telegrams. Of course. Juror number five, your input, please. Stop. Oh, me, sir. Whatever is the matter? You told the court before that you worked at the same communication station as Mr. Graydon, did you not? Y yes, that's correct. And the particular station where you work deals with government communications and newspaper reports. Oh, yes, we're not your run of the mill communication station at all. Our work is extremely important. Then tell me, this is not a very familiar sound. Hmm. You, you don't mean to say, is it? That's right, madam. It bears more than a passing resemblance to the sound made by your telegraph machine as you tap it. I believe it's called Morse code. But I don't believe it. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to leaking telegrams from government de departments, there could be nobody more perfectly placed than a highly skilled communications officer. Are, are you suggesting that the music box disc contains a stolen government secret in Morse code? Order! Order! Please, everyone, order! But this, this is, this is high treason council, deserving of capital punishment. Too much new vocabulary. What is this treason? And what is capital punishment? The sorts of words I'd have expect you to know. For sovereign government's confidential information, hostile nations would surely pay almost any price. Yes, and on that night two months ago, that was the very negotiation that was taking place inside the omnibus. Speaking of parents that need something, BRB. <laughs> Have fun, smooth. But in the end, McGilded perished and the all important disc lay unclaimed in the pawnbrokery. My word. In which case, whoever stole that information in the first place must surely have been beside himself with worry. Because if the disc were to be discovered before it found its way out of the country, it would reveal an act of high treason punishable by death. So the culprit had no choice but to retrieve it. And in order to do that, he would have to gain entry to the pawnbrokery illegally in the middle of the night. Because the article left behind by Mr. McGilded would incriminate him too much if it got into the wrong hands. Isn't that right, Mr. Graydon? Oh, uh, you can't say nothing? You you think I've been stealing government secrets? Preposterous! Absolutely preposterous! So, in response to the defense's accusation, you claim complete innocence, do you? Well, of course I do. I've had to stand here in silence while that pretentious foreign lawyer has been prattling away. Then by all means, counter the charges, sir. The prosecution demands the witness testifies in response to the accusations brought by the defense. Delighted, I'm sure. The witness is reminded that the crime under scrutiny is this trial. Uh, in this trial is the murder of the pawnbroker, Mr. Winterback. That being a most flood. What? Flagitch? Flagitious? I have never seen that word. Flagitious. Uh, criminal. Villainous. Okay. Flagitious. Flagitious. Okay. I learned a word today. But the heinous act of high treason is no less serious a crime. I urge you to bear that in mind as you testify, Mr. Graydon. 
Flagitious. Flagitious toast. No, I am not criminal toast. So then, I just for oh. I think people say video games don't teach you anything. Exactly. You got also uh, have a rabbit and pork. Pork, governor. We've got things to say. I learned what archipelagos before anyone else in my grade knew what archipelagos were. And because I, it's because I play Chrono Cross. And they're like, oh, this story takes place in the archipelagos of blah, 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 blah. So when that word showed up and my English teacher was like, anyone know what this means? I was like, islands. He was like, what? A small group of islands. And he's like, yeah, that's right. Wow, bragging. I mean, if people say video games don't teach you anything. Boom, proof right there, it does teach you stuff. I, I beg your pardon, who do you think you are? Name's not Skulkin, occupation is professional baddie. Name's Ringo Skulkin, but we ain't baddies enough to sell out our motherland. Ooh? That's right, we want the call. Skulkin Brothers. James taught me that Jelly Toast has a lot more fun names we can think of. <laughs> what? Bad timing, fellas. Very bad timing. Is Gregson really the third Skulkin brother then? Have I been wrong? I thought Eckert was the third one, but maybe it's him. I learned degrees from the old Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games when I do 180s, 360s. Exactly! See, like, it teaches you math, it teaches you, like, geographical terms, it teaches you flagitious. Man, video games are great. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly steal confidential government information. Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even most cool. Blah, Morse code. It was some low-class brickmaker negotiating with McGilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Look, all we've done is break into the gap uh, the other night like we, what you told us to do. And we know there was dodgy government secrets of all, we wouldn't have touched it. So... Graydon wasn't there then? Um, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Well, Mr. Aldo, governor, what's up? Do I take it that you now admit to the crime? That on the night in question, you did indeed gain entry to the premises illegally. And moreover, you do so as a party of three in corroboration, in collaboration with Mr. Graydon here. We did, Gov, we do. So Graydon was there. So... Quieten down, please. What did you- what say you to that, Mr. Graydon? I have no idea what these two ruffians are referring to. You little rot -up. get us mixed up in all this monkey business! You never said nothing about no government secrets! It was supposed to be a straight up job! And what about the geezer whose shop it was, eh? Poor old bloke didn't have to die, did he? Ah! Nice to know who your friends are. Whatever these men say, I deny their accusations. Indeed. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this little music box to become so significant in the proceedings. However, as it has, I will admit it into the court record as evidence. Is it not Morse code, really? Um, Cross-examination... Shut up! I'm going to examine the music box now. Oh, what is it, Runa? I've I've just noticed something about this music box. It looks like the bottom of it opens up as well. Ah, you're right. Well, come on then. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. All right then. Here goes. Oh, <gasps> another side! Look at that. There's another movement on the other side. So does that mean you can set another disc to play back on this side? Yes, I think so. It looks like the two movements are linked together. They're linked? So if you have two discs, they would both play back at the same time. And that would complete the Morse code. That's why Eggert's like, hoo, 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 this isn't even the Morse code, it's not finished. 
It's because you gotta have the other disc. Da da da. See how the form of Gilded Disc sits in the music box the man deposited at Windebags? It couldn't be a more perfect fit. So there's no question then, the disc was designed to be played in this music box. Yet despite that, the sounds it produces are neither musical nor do they appear to have any meaning. It just doesn't make any sense. Where do I get the second disc from? I wonder. And perhaps there's more to this music box than meets the eye. Maybe you haven't discovered all its secrets yet. I discovered the secret, but now I'm wondering where the second disc is. What if I examine this side again? Is it just gonna be like the, oh, get a second disc? Would have thought there would be a second movement on the underside of the box. And this movement is like the other one. The cow's teeth are all the same length. So this movement also only produces a single tone like the other one. Yes, it must do. Except the length of the teeth on the two cones isn't the same. So the single tone produced by this movement will be different to the single tone we've already heard. What? Basically, each movement can only produce a single note. But the notes they produce are different. A music box that can only play two tones. Hmm. <laughs> because how would a music box play longer tones like that of Morse code? Anyways, press everything. So, is this newspaper headline accurate? Government communications are being intercepted. How could I possibly know? What do you mean by that? Any important government communications are handled by high-level officers, by specialists. General members of staff in the station where I work would never be entrusted with sensitive information. No, no, stop! I must say something! Stop! Let me guess. Juror number five. We regular communication station officers aren't as lowly as you're being led to believe. A team of us are responsible for setting up and testing the telegraphs used by the Ministry. And Mr. Graydon is the team leader. That's fascinating. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Hmm. So you had access to the equipment used for these confidential communications, Mr. Graydon. Well, what of it? The transmissions are always made behind closed doors. So they can't be heard. And in any case, all messages are sent in ciphered. Normal employees couldn't possibly understand them. Oh no, stop. Must say something. Stop. Mr. Graydon regularly attends meetings with the Ministry technicians and the Ministry communications team. He assists them in ensuring that there are no errors in important inter international communications. And he's received the top prize at the, the Cypher Cracking Convention five years in a row now. That's fascinating. He's gonna strangle her. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop! Currently in presence of idol. Stop! Well, your idol would appreciate it if you keep your mouth shut. She should really pick her idols more carefully. I... I tell you this lawyer's accusations are completely unfounded. They're not? To anyone with a brain, that would be blatantly apparent on listening to that music box for even a few seconds. Of course, of course. Surely it can't be that my learned friend is unfamiliar with Morse code. Ouch, he looks genuinely shocked at my ignorance. Ha ha ha. I'll be more than happy to demonstrate the basics for you, sir. Uh, a lesson here in court? Morse code is a continuous series of two distinct tones. It's Morse code, Jelly, one hour ago. I know, for real! It is Morse code, the other disc will will help prove it, because it'll elongate some of the other tones. It is Morse code. It's gonna be Morse code. Tones, you say? Yes, a short dot and a long dash. By combining those in different ways, you construct letters. I see. For example, this is A. This is B. But when you listen to the sound produced by this music box, you only hear one tone, don't you? But it sounds so similar. The rhythm is the same in everything. But there's no discernible meaning to this apparently random sequence of sounds. So your assertion is fundamentally flawed. This is not Morse code. No! 
<laughs> really, you shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? That music box is nothing but a worthless piece of scrap. Perhaps you might consider studying your subject matter before casting aspersions in the future. Ugh, stop. Nothing to say, but stop. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Iris? I mean, if the government secrets were somehow being leaked using the music box. So many other things would slot into place so nicely. Could there still be something I haven't considered? Would it really be impossible to use this music box somehow to play back Morse code? Oh! No, 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 it's not impossible, no! No, 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 no! shoot, 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 is that, can I, oh, frack! Uh, no, 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 no! Oh, shoot, I need to go back. For the time being, such optimism. Too debonair to admit to admit defeat, are we? I'm fine. Yeah, I was thinking, oh man, I'm screwed, but I don't have a second disc yet, so I can't really prove it, so I think that's why it's okay? Ugh, those gesticulations are really starting to break. Hmm, I can't be Morse code unless it has the last two distinct tones. Perhaps I should examine that music box. Wait, perhaps I should examine that music box in a little more detail. I don't have a second disc, though. Um, right? I only have the one. Mm, and that one's in there. Oh, frack. Oh, let's keep pressing them. So two months ago in that omnibus, Magilda killed the brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived as an artisan quarter some years ago, but the people there uh, lived in an artisan quarter some years ago, but the people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense though, does it? How did a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed. There must have been somebody else involved behind the scenes in all of this. Somebody who acquired the disc and gave it to Mr. Mason in order to take it to the meeting with McGilded and negotiate a deal. Okay, what did I miss? Um, the box was a music box, and I thought it played Morse code, but it turns out there's an underside to the music box, so I need a second disc. Dear me. You may have an inform me, sir, but I assure you, I have far more class than that. An old brickmaker from an artisan quarter and this well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. If you have nothing more to add on to that note, let us return to the witness testimony. Like Mr. Graydon told you to do, you mean? That's it, yeah. Who else, eh? So me thought he was just popping over for another after all the years, but the runner had a dodgy dog for us. Eh, Ash? Let me stop you there, Mr. Skulkin. After all them years, you say? Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Graydon is an acquaintance of yours? What a social kind of bad is, you know? Sure, let's say Graydon's in old China. Usually visit my island. I made the biggest changes I'm going to make to it already, so it's good to go. Okay, I will definitely make sure I will visit your island. I will visit the dream address. Is there is something? Wait, did you update your dream address though? Because if you didn't, then I can't see the updates. Is something wrong, Mr. Skulkin? Eh? No, the other Mr. Skulkin. What? Who? They? When your brother was testifying just now, he said something that seemed to cause you to react. Oh, I was just remembering the old days, that's all. Sticky note. I did update it, she gives you a dream ticket and I don't know what it's for. Um, you sell it to the store and it gives you bells. I think. We used to have a right and old laugh together way back when. Right old laugh. Together? With Mr. Graydon, you mean? 
with Ash. I mean, you look at him now, and his fancy whistle and flute, and you wouldn't have Adam and Eve. What? And you wouldn't Adam and Eve. What does that mean? But when he was younger, he was from the poor part of town, just like us. So he's not their brother. So maybe Gregson really is the brother. What the heck? Is that so? Well, it was always leery one. He had the brains. He had the savvy. Always coming up with smart ideas like what wouldn't have gone through our heads. Go cool, blimey, ain't that the truth? Remember Milton and Skulkin's milk run? That was a corker, eh? That's some freaky moment when it suddenly starts pouring rain outside. Oh, I want it to rain here again, please. Save it until after the trial. Your reminiscing has no place in this courtroom. And neither does your fruit. <laughs> Oi, the geezer asked us a question, didn't he? And what we was answering. And we was answering. Yeah, we ain't done nothing wrong. Nevertheless, the court is not prepared to accompany you on your trip down memory lane. I don't mind rain, but it always freaks me out a bit when it suddenly gets super loud outside with the rain. It hasn't become that loud in California, in SoCal, uh, with that kind of rain. I think the last time it rained really hard and we were all just like, what the heck was, um... It was 2018. January. So, like, three years ago. Counsel, can we turn our attention back to the testimony, please? I don't know. Could that Sentinel's story be relevant somehow? Yeah, I did. Because they knew him. Hard rain on metal roof gets loud. Mmm. My lord. Uh, I always preferred USC. Oh, for, um, for universities? Porky Toast Pig? Why am I po Oh, because I can't read. <laughs> yes, counsel. The brother's last sentimental statement could hold vital information relating to this case. Very well, counsel. I will permit the brothers to supplement their testimony with that detail. Briefly, I hasten to add. In Cali, 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 SoCal. Oh, is that what I... Is that what I said? Oops. <laughs> Say no more. A skulkin is now a skulkin. Milton and Skulkin's milk run. Gore, those were the days. I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but what exactly was that? Some kind of business? Whoa, why did it skip him so fast? Just a little scheme we had going back when we were youngsters. A bit of fun, really. Pff, geography. <laughs> Deliver a fresh belt to the locals, that's what it was all about. That sounds alarmingly legitimate. There must be a catch. I suppose since we're here, I should ask them to elaborate, but on what? Hmm. Uh business model, the business name. So this business was just a bit of fun, you say? And it was just yourselves and Mr. Graydon involved. Yeah, that's it. Milverton and Skulkin's milk run, was it? Yeah, that's it. And where did the Milverton part come from? I suck at geography though, I'm lucky. I know New York is in the Northeast. It's, it's a ma- Whoa, 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 whoops. I missed that. Oh, right. I thought a clever clock like you had worked that one out. That is... Hold it. Uh-oh. Um, it surprises me how many uh, people, how many Americans don't know all the states in America and don't know where all of them are located. Like, if you get the general area, like, oh, Kansas is in the center, Florida's in the southeast. Great. Like... All the um, central states, mountain states, like if you don't know where exactly they are, but like you know, hey, they're like in the right side of America, fine. Some people don't know that. And I'm like, you should at least know what your country is laid out like, right? One of my favorites is when I heard someone thought Seattle was in California. Wow. I mean, if they're not familiar with like West Coast, then I'm just like, maybe, but come on guys. Enough of this. How much longer are we expected to listen to this drivel? I don't, shut up. 
Let me guess, you don't accept anything these two witnesses are saying. Tell me, why is it that it was only at this mention of the name Milverton that you decided to interject? Be because I... well... We're at the obvious of homes that one came from. Yeah, his old man was struggling for money so much, his wife walked out on him. She took the name Graydon then, see? But that shall always be Milverton to us. Milverton. So this guy just changes names all the time. So that used to be your surname, did it? Of course not. This is all bunkum. I've been a Graydon since I was born. Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of those two thieves, hmm? You're a communications officer attached to the civil service. As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those records, Mr. Graydon. Ah! Well, it would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin's testimony has been reliable, for once. You were born Ashley Milverton, then. Is that correct? Well, yes. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things and could turn out to be extremely important. Whoa! -ho! A telegraph operator at the Central Communication Station whose last name was once Milverton years ago. He's a childhood friend of the Skulkin brothers. So he's not the third brother. But he does the movements like them. <laughs> All of a sudden, we seem to be up our necks in a serious matter of national security. Although, all this talk about interception of secret government messages is still co just conjecture at this stage. Would explain a number of things, though, wouldn't it? The negotiation Ginny overheard the omnibus two months ago and the break-in at Winterbanks. But the trouble is, it wasn't Mr. Graydon in the omnibus with Mr. McGill did. No, that was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker who was so horribly murdered. Hmm, if only there was some link between the two men somehow. I know, but what? But Mr. Graydon's testimony seems to be as watertight as ever. I wonder if the key to us making headway with the cross-examination here... Could be those two brothers. So what new information do I have now? We didn't get any more new evidence. Um, and I can't look at court profiles for some reason. Uh, besides music, blah, blah, mere communications officer, he's one of the top ranked ones. He leads a team. The code is in full Morse code because we're missing a disc. Um, I have no relation to the man. Let's press this again. He was born Milverton, so it doesn't have. He doesn't have anything to do with Mason. Two months ago, in that um, it was McGilda killed a brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived in artist quarter some years ago, but people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense, though, does it? How would a humble brick maybe come to acquire secret government information? How indeed? Do I have to press for the the business model now? Someone else involved in the scene. Someone who acquired the disc gave it to Mr. Mason. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. You seem to hate me, but I have nothing to do with this man. No brickmaker from Arzencourt is well to the communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. If you have nothing more to add on that, no, let us return to witness testimony. Hey guys, who wants to talk about murders? Because don't tell anyone that I said this, but... Yukiko Maggie's missing and we kinda think she's the killer! Poof! <laughs> if we know there was dodgy government secrets, we... Uh, oh, I haven't pressed this statement, whoops. So, did you know nothing about this music box? We didn't know nothing, we still don't know nothing, and we ain't planning on knowing nothing about it neither. But two nights ago, you did indeed break into Winterbank's pawnbroker, didn't you? In your original testimony, you said that the door of the shop was ajar, and that it was like some kind of a sign begging you to go in. 
But the truth is, you were planning to break into Windbanks all along, weren't you? We were, Gov, we were. You're right there. Oh, that sound was from him. Okay, never mind. Everyone is eating and drinking in court. Can I have pizza? Ah, oh, man, I want pizza now. Was that what he told us to? Well, it was his plan. And why was it Mr. Graydon's plan to break into Windebex that night? Did you not ask the reason? Well, um, um, he said the place was full of stuff worth nicking. That's what he told us beforehand, anyway. Turned out it was a load of cobbles, didn't it? I want breath, please, I can tell you. In any case, if they know the real reason, it doesn't sound like they're going to give it away. Mmm, Milverton has Gulkins. Okay, so let me ask about the business model now. So, how did your little business work exactly? Well, every morning down our way, the milkman would come with this cart to deliver milk, see? If you stuck your empties outside your front door, he would leave you them full, right? But he would leave you them full again, wait. What? So, we swooped in on the action. Got people to sign up with us. We promised to deliver milk for half the price of the other geezers doing it. People couldn't wait to sign on the dotted line. We were raking it in, we were. So, did you live on a dairy farm or something? Gordon Bennett, I you off your rocket? We had nothing. We were too poor to have a farm. Right. Now, nah, what we had going was simple once you had the idea. We just switch them over, see? Our customers empties with the full ones from anyone who wasn't in our box. I that all right. Dairy farm, fresh milk, butter, cheese, and hamburger meat. Mmm, cheeseburgers! I think you meant to say a diddle, and that's a crime. It was just almost bit of fun, that's all. Milking the general public in such a fashion is most certainly not armless, as you put it. Well, it wasn't what came up with the idea. I should the evil genius. You mean Mr. Graydon? So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things, and could turn out to be extremely important. Wild Duck Burger and Big Bang Burger, the burger we all want to see, we all want but don't deserve. <laughs> mm, but ducks and, hmm, duck meat and cow meat, would that really, hmm. Well, Wild Duck Burger probably isn't really made out of ducks, but duck meat is nice. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How do we link the two men? I pressed on the statement with the... Pressed on the statement with they didn't know nothing about... Uh... Let me try pressing on this again. Never had duck? Oh, you should try it at least once. Like, the first time I had it, it was very nice. But then the next time I had it, there were so many bones. And I was just like, I can't enjoy the meat. But it's very tender. What Mr. Grayton told you to do? That's it, yeah. Who else? I'm just popping over for a dodgy job. Ash. Enough. Why don't you baddies desist with the fiction? <gasps> Obviously, I don't know these men from Adam. Now, for the last time, stop trying to implicate me in your sordid thievery. Well, that's proven nice, isn't it? You little turncoat. Fine, if that's how you want it, two can play at that game. We had never heard of this geezer before either. Don't know it from Adam. No, that's that's not what you want to say. Uh, never spoken to me before. Never seen him. Never, Nash. Never. Good grief, such a blatant lie will not stand in my courtroom. Well, well, all I say is this. I had duck once, it kind of tasted like bacon. I had duck in like a soup, so it tasted, my duck tasted like soup. We know there was dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. And I pressed that. 
And I already asked, this is how we got Milverton's name and the business model, but I think it's the name that was more important. So do I present the... Okay, I'm gonna try presenting the box here. Oh, this is confusing. Uh... No, sorry. That was wrong. How do we link the two men together? I can't look at profiles. Mmm. Uh. Freely. Mm. Gina, blood samples, but they don't care. Blood on it is Mr. Mason's photograph. Iris's manuscripts. I don't think this has anything to do with. Yeah, it just shows that the manuscript was there. McGilda's case, who cares? Morse code. Autopsy report for the dude. Crime scene for plant. Post shooting. It got slightly moved. Music box disc. Sholmes' pouch. Third bullet. Small music box. Mm. What do I do? What do I do? What goes with duck? Um. Rice? <laughs> Soup? <laughs> Vegetables? I've only had duck twice. First in soup, second time was just the duck meat with us, um, with a side of rice and broccoli. That's broccoli? That was some kind of veg. Hmm. How do we link the two men? How do we link the two men? If we'd known there was dodgy on secret, because... Always some break break into the gaff the other night like what he told us to. I have no relation to the man. And when I press this, I keep getting there must have been someone linking you to, and he's like, hey, I don't know why you keep putting it on me. More Morse code that proves that we need another disc and this oh gosh. Sorry. Walk through time again! Because I just can't get it. Present today's paper. Press statement two. This month for two discs. The business name. New evidence. Oh, oh. Okay. I didn't know it was that. All right. Um. Turns out you're supposed to do the McGilded case notes on this statement. Why? Um... <gasps> That's why! His name is Mason Milverton. I thought Mason was his last name. Oh, gosh. I have no relation to the man. Oh, no. Mr. Ashley Milverton. Tell me, why did you try to hide your former name from the court? I didn't realize ah, I'm a fool. Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. No, I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. Explain yourself, please, counsel. I have here the notes from the omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we understand have... Uh, the man who we n now understand to have been negotiating with McGilded. Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. M Milverton? Do, do you mean to say, Saints alive? Mr. Ashley Milverton. Is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? Oh, I, I don't. As I believe I mentioned earlier, 
Your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you joined the civil service. Excuse me. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. <sighs> Don't tell anyone, but on the last Ace Justice for all, I kept the walkthrough open. Dude, okay. Is Justice for All the third um, Phoenix Wright game? Because that last case was so freaking confusing. I had to keep a walkthrough open too because they're like, oh, this piece of evidence for this thing, but wait, this for this thing and this for this thing. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Like things, it made sense in my head, but what the how the game tried to lay it out and have it all make like sense and connect together. I was like, this is so freaking convoluted. You didn't have to go through this all roundabout way, but hey, that's what they chose to do. The truth is you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information and selling that onto McGilded in collaboration with your father. Objection! The slander! I carved a new life for myself as a respectable communications officer, as a gentleman. I have no idea what my father has been up to, but it has nothing to do with me. And may I remind the court that the assertion that this disc contains some sort of message in Morse code has been reliably disproven by a professional and independent communications officer, no less. Hmm. Come on, show, show up at the second desk. The relationship between the victim of the omnibus case and the, this witness is an undoubtedly significant. However, the defense's argument remains somewhat incomplete, I feel. No. I believe the cross-examination should continue. All right, so Morse code uses two tones. If I could just demonstrate the possibility that this could have been used to generate two distinct tones. Hmm, perhaps we should have a really good look over the music box, Reno. I already did. You will reiterate your testimony if you please, Mr. Graydon. If I must, though I maintain exactly what I did at the start of this pointless cross-examination. Oh, do I present the music box now? It's not even Morse code. Uh, uh, presents. Because now I know that it has two, so... Let's just consider the implications of that. No, this is wrong. But I didn't save, so we're just keeping this going. What implications? Sure, nothing's wrong. Blah, 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 blah. I need to clear my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Fine. Let me examine this one more time. Oh. That is a runo. I've just noticed... Wait! Are they saying... They completely undid my music box findings? I have to do it, like, now for it to appear? Yeah, this is where she talks about the teeth being the different sizes. Now do I present it? No, but the description didn't update. Mm. But now I discovered something new. Oh, blah. Sorry, walk through again. <laughs> Um. Wait, what? Wait, what? Okay, never mind. Produce our Morse code. No relation to the man. Wait, what? Wait, this walkthrough is is missing something. They're like, trials and tribulations is the last one. Took a break after the case. Uh, uh, thanks for the heads up. Oh, I don't. Did I play the second Apollo Justice? I did I play Apollo Justice? I think I played Apollo Justice. Yeah, I definitely played Apollo Justice. But when did I play the second Apollo Justice? I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Updated, present McGilda case notes at statement three. There's a lot of dialogue here. Quite a bit. But what? 
When do you say this? Huh? What? Am I? I'm missing something. The walkthrough is missing something. Oh my gosh. It's not this music box. Before the black overcoat. Do I just press here again now that I found found out that he's Milverton? No relation, you say? That's a blatant lie. Mason Milverton was your father. I'm not obliged to talk about my family history here. The name Milverton is a distant memory to me. Now, I'm a man of more class. I severed ties with Mason long ago. He has no place in my new life. Certainly, the idea of Humble Brickmaker gaining access to government secrecy is far-fetched. But having learned that his son is an elite communications officer, the idea suddenly becomes more credible. Credible or not, I have no intention of admitting to any of these outlandish claims. You will, I just need more time. All he does is break into the gaff the other night like what he told us to. Am I supposed to press like one of these again? There was... It's not that. Oops. Uh, I'm gonna try pressing on this statement one more time. I guess the Graydon told you to do, you mean? That's it, yeah. Who else, eh? It's in the meat that we were just popping up for an hour after the mirrors of Dodgy Jaffa's, say Ash. And now, find out your baddies to test with the, desist with the fiction. Obviously, I don't know these men from Adam. For the last time, stop trying to implicate me in your sordid theory. Well, that's blooming nice, isn't it? Your little tank coat, fine. Oh, and there's like, oh, we don't know him. We've never seen him. <sighs> am I? No, seriously, am I missing something? Do I examine this again? Mason Milverton. Let's feel the. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I need to look up another another um, walkthrough. Wow. Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Case 5 walkthrough. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, disc, Omnibus Case. Oh, I'm on like the last section. Nice. Uh, government Secrets. Business Name. Um, what do wait? What the selling it to McGill? One of the deals went awry. Made some other sand. What did do? What did do? Missing. This was stuck inside the music box. It's all of course. Great and the truth. Um, and it's been gesturing so much that there's what? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. This walkthrough, sorry for spoilers, but this walkthrough is saying, um, get Graydon denies the truth and has been gesturing so much now that there's blood seeping through the left sleeve of his coat? Really? There's no need to examine it for bullet wounds anymore. Ashley Graydon will finally admit to being at the crime scene that night. What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me... Okay. Let me do this again. Present the McGilded notes on statement three. Witnesses' last statement is clearly at odds with this piece of evidence. Wait, what? Now it doesn't count anymore? Sail is sealed, see the connection. Damn it, damn it. Wasn't that statement three? I don't understand. Am I missing something? 
You're mashing buttons, kung fu is getting better. <laughs> what? There, these two walkthroughs are saying one side present the McGill case notes, case notes on statement three, then it'll just keep going. So am I missing something? <sighs> okay. From the beginning of the cross-examination, the small music box was added. Um, okay, press statement one to hear about juror number five. Cool. Press statement two. Um, it's not Morse code. Give it a try. Oh! Wait, what? Oh! Frat! I'm, I missed a step. Yeah, 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 yeah. Presents. Um... No, wait, I have to press. And then I have to go back and do the, um... Do the, hey, this music box is important. And then I have to show it, it has another side. That's what I'm missing. Uh, I totally forgot about that statement. I'm skipping this dialogue since we all saw it before. It sounds so similar. It's the same in everything. Okay, now I have to be careful with my button pushing. Ha 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 ha. Shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? These buttons are the better words. Please scrap. Such a matter of Stop. Let's go stay, but stop. Oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Iris, I mean, if the government secrets for the box. So many other things just line up playing so nicely. Could there still be something I haven't considered? Would it really be impossible? Give it a try! And this is what I was missing. Skipping toast. Actually, that sounds like a kid's jump rope rhyme song. <laughs> There's still every possibility that this music box was instrumental in the leaking of government secrets. That's the belief of the defense, at least. Does it please you in some way, my Nipponese friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? You had to drive around the block a few times that you got there. I totally forgot about that because in my head I was like, there's two sides, but in the in the game, I didn't show everyone else that there's two sides to the music box, so. Uh, it's already been established that to be Morse code, two tones are required, dots and dashes. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Then what? Well, it would appear the defense has a hypothesis to put forward. You had better present your idea at once, counsel. How do you propose that this music box, which appears to produce only a single tone, could have been used to cipher secret messages into Morse code? Video game movie logic. We know something, but the characters don't. I know, and that's what makes it, um... That's what makes it infuriating! Yes, this is it then. Did I have to open it? Oh my word! Oh my gosh, this is infuriating! Ah! Show sure, the right line, something out that music box. Oh my gosh. Uh, no! I have to do that freaking conversation all over again. Ah! I am mad. I am angry. I have to do this. A third time. Can you hear the button mashing? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, you can? <laughs> That's how mad I am! I'm sorry I keep going through the same stupid conversation. I thought if I just showed the box and they're like, what? What's so special about this area? And then I would have pushed it and be like, observe, it opens. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Give it a try. Da -da -da -ba -ba -ba. 
Du, 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 du. Dots and dashes. Now I have to be careful. Could have been used as I for secret Morse code. It totally opened up and now it's totally closed and that's infuriating. Whoa, guys, there's a bottom. Need a new PS4 controller? I have two PS4 controllers, but one's for my um, PS Vita TV thing. Good gracious, what am I looking at here? Another movement on the other side of the music box. What? It appears, my lord, that the two movements are linked together. In other words, you can put two discs in this music box. And the sounds of both will play back at the same time. Good heavens! As the court has heard, Morse code comprises of two tones, a short dot, and a long dash. With a second disc in place, this music box could be used to generate Morse code and convey a message. Ah! Playing two discs for people who just can't listen to just one song. <laughs> the new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross-examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth. I left for 20 minutes and we're barely talking about Morse code. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had, I had to do the same conversation three times. The, the truth, you say? That you collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason Milverton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McGilded. By dint of this music box, you mean, Council? Yes, stealing information being sent in secret government communications and selling it onto McGilded. Mr. Grading concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music boxes to encode the information. As, presumably, a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given the scheme any credence whatsoever. I know Morse code. Dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dot. I think we all know that one. Hi, you're awesome. Have a cat. Thank you. I'm not that awesome or else I would have gotten to this point a lot sooner. But thanks for the positive words, Kirby. But the deal with the gilded went sour and the brick maker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, McGilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbroker. Then, having learned of the situation, you appeared at Windebanks two days ago. In an attempt to recover the two articles McGilded had placed in pawn there. But that attempt failed. One of the discs was seized by the police, and the other you never found. So that same night... You enlisted the help of the Skulkin Brothers and broke into the pawnbrokery. What is SOS? <laughs> Salute our shorts. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Uh, are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? Eh? We, we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Mr. Windebank was killed, The intruder to the pawnbrokery touched one item and one item alone, the music box. As rather ingeniously demonstrated using the two prints from the security camera, indeed. So the question that naturally begs answering is this, why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since, if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of high treason. Why are you grabbing your arm now? Oh, now it's going to show the blood, because he's been moving around a lot. Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny it all, that all of this actually began on that fateful night two months ago? I, I, I refuse to accept any of this nonsense. Yo, what's that on your sleeve? Sir. 
There appears to be blood seeping through the sleeve of your jacket. What? Ah! Two nights ago. We know that three shots were fired at the scene of the crime in Windebeck's pawnbrokery. One took the life of the pawnbroker himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Sholm's waist. And the final bullets. Struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon. That wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide. It's a bullet wound, isn't it? He's caught you now, me old china. Time to call it quits and croak, I reckon. Don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those are my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly I was a fool to think I could trust some common backslum thieves. He's gonna be like, Yes, I was there, but I didn't shoot Windebank, and that's what this trial's for, so you can't come you can't accuse me of anything. Fine, I admit it. I was there in Windebanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to ten guineas to accompany me. And as you've noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. But that is all. I admit to nothing more. Oh, there we go. Stealing government secrets, negotiating with Mr. McGilded. Taking a bullet for ten dollars. Yep, sounds fair. <laughs> As God is my witness, I sh I'm sure I pulled nothing oh, of the sword. Sorry, I knocked my mic down. Whoopsies. He's not going down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is... Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun hit the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Windebank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed it must. We can rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. Colette does this. <laughs> I remember Colette. Oh my gosh, she would trip over nothing. Ah, uh, Tails. I really want to play a Tails game again. And that leads us to only one conclusion. Mr. Windebank was shot by a third gun. Jelly Oracle. <laughs> Which can only have been fired by the third intruder. Goodness. That's right, Mr. Graydon. Her. The only person who could possibly have shot Mr. Windebank that night is you. No, it wasn't. I have proof. You have to listen to my testimony now. <laughs> you little upstart. You made a grave mistake when you summoned me here. My favorite oracle is Tabasakura. I still have to finish Persona 5 Strikers! <laughs> I'm seriously considering, like, maybe take taking, like, one day out on a weekend to just stream a whole bunch of Ace Attorney so I could just finish it. What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, as you rightly say, I was there at the prom brokers. I did my best to hide the facts, naturally. I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I built for myself at the communication station. Communication station. But did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never con consider the possibility? What? What do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that I was there at the scene. That if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. If that was hilarious and strikers, her voice actress goes all out. <laughs> you see... This makes me a key witness in this case, and I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. What? Oh, are you suggesting? I saw it all. 
I saw the very moment that the pickpocket girl pointed the gun at the poor defenseless pawnbroker and shot him. What? Uh, I remember seeing an ad for Sonic Colors, I think Kirby sent me on Twitter, where Futaba's voice actress was like, Oh man, look at the colors! Ah! <laughs> it was so cute and so funny. Oh, duh! Well, it would seem we are finally entering the last act of this- <gasps> This is it! This is the last! Last act of this theatrical trial. Mr. Graydon! Yes? I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claim is false, you will have the you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I understand fully. So he's a witness now, huh? Now he is. An Takamaki strikes me as a Sonic fan. Futaba strikes me as a Genshin fan. Oh yeah, Futaba would definitely play Genshin. And I must ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly shot the victim. Naturally. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I would like to wring your neck. I need to tie my hair up higher. It's getting real hot. The moment of the shooting. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. Whoops. Wrong button, wrong button! When Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the people in the door, though. The accused, in a black coat, shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. Oh wait, she did have the coat. I saw the blood splatter all of that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made by- Are you- are you serious, dude? There was no blood on Gina and the gun! Why would she toss the gun out if she was knocked out? Wait, what? I don't- Wait, hold up, let me- Uh, why did your dad go into your room earlier? He needed help with his, um, phone. Well, he's facing trees and so he's grasping. Oh my gosh, but like, these are like, crazy, wildly inaccurate things. And he was shot in the back, so how would the blood splatter over her? I don't need my headphones right now, we're not listening to music. Good gracious, this, this is quite extraordinary testimony. You claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. There was no blood on the coat. All da. It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. But neither is, is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. So you see, my hand has been forced. I tell the truth now as an act of self-preservation. The truth? Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Yes, well, um, sorry about that. Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. And as I said, she was showered in his blood. You say the blood splattered over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that point? Oh yes, quite sure. All over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? If a coat could somehow be shown to uh, harbor vestiges of blood, that would be conclusive evidence here. <laughs> and he's the brains? Ugh. He's he's desperate. Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. What? Only very recently, a German scientist has developed a technique to identify human blood. 
So here's to true science, not some amateurs detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Hurley's work. His ideas are all sound. Ideals are no use to us here. In science, as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. Just because someone is the brains of the operation doesn't mean they have a big brain. That is also true. Good point. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as the basis of evidence. Scotland Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used, with your lordship's permission. We could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. Hmm. This doesn't look good, Reno. Why not? Well, we know, don't we, that there's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. If they test it with their chemicals... Oh, help. You're right, I was forgetting what happened yesterday. I mean, of course it has blood because, because isn't that the coat that Mason wore? Hmm. German, the angriest of all languages. I like how they say butterfly, Schmetterling. <laughs> That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by Magilda. Yeah. That's why there's blood all over it. But if she shot him... From the back, how would the blood splatter all over her? Because the blood... My lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled. Lord Van Zeeks, make it so at once. With pleasure, my lord. And while we await the results, the defense may proceed with cross-examination. Once they find that blood on the overcoat, Gina will be... Counsel. Yes, my lord. Your cross-examination. Of course, my lord. If this cross-examination doesn't go well... If I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence or a really compelling clue now, I have a very bad feeling about the outcome of this trial. The only German I know is Leon uh, Dreis Dreisettel? No, I'm pretty sure there's other German, you know. Um, mm, kindergarten. That's German. I'm just gonna press every statement. Mr. Windebank and Virgil in the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring the counter when he suddenly appeared and flew at them. Only two words then. What else in German? Um, Koreans use Arbeit, Arbeit uh, for part-time jobs. That's German. Um, what else is German? Um, beer. <laughs> That's German. Uh, he he already had the blah, 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 blah. I'm stuttering again. He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. And I've been just scared all my life. Yeah, we're just your regular mild man of bugglers. That's all. We don't like violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. Uh, what do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves of forfeited items. Looking for the music box, of course. The broker went for Nash in the first place. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one, so I assumed they could handle the situation. But I was wrong. I was trying to help me little bro, but the old geezer chucked me over the bloomin' counter. So I pulled me gun, you old fella, and that shoe made him scarper. The pair of you settling upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together, shame on you. Sorry, Gov. I went back to a natural I felt a pain, sharp pain off my arm. You mean that's the moment you were shot? Yes, though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed on the floor from the counter as three men were brawling. 
It was at exactly that moment that it happened, so I didn't hear the gunshot. And the bullet went on to strike the calendar wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly, so I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Did Mr. Windebank intend to shoot you, do you think? Three words, Albert Einstein. <laughs> well, no, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't quite strike home. When I pulled the gun on him, he tried to shove me out the way. And then he scarped through that door out back. At which point, what did you do? Pursued the man, but he shouted, why would you pursue the man? You mean you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about this people in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom door was a solid job, made of stout wood. But there's a small opening in about head height that lets you see what's in there from the outside. Actually, I should know that, shouldn't I? I looked through it myself that night. And what about your burgling brothers? Did you see what went on through this peephole as well? Not like the gov, you don't see nothing on the sock gov. I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the people's existence. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Windebank take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I could see the broker and that young girl standing there. The defendant. Yes, then neither of them noticed that I was looking. The girl raised a gun and pointed it straight at the man. And then? What did you see next? The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back of trying to flee to safety. Yes, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with a gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Windbank's gun from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we've already established, Mr. Graydon, that bullet was fired at you. Ah, oh, but no, it wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Windebeck's gun grazed my arm, and yes, the Skullkin's gun grounded the detective. But this was another gun entirely. A third gun. The broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly it had to be a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the time. But no other gun was found at the scene. <laughs> Calm yourself, counsel. Sorry? You must consider the events in order. Hmm? At first I saw the broker and the girl glaring at each other, but then all of a sudden... The broker turned to run. And it was at that moment... That the little girl rat shot him in the back. Four words, Venus Nissel. I hope I spelled that right. Uh, no. How, uh, how is it? Is it... Wienerschnitzel? Or the I and the E might be switched. Oh! You know another word! Dachshund! The dog? The wiener dog? That's German. Uh, shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. I never claim to be a good speller. Spelling is hard. Wait, oui. you know another German word, Volkswagen. Not a blood spatter over that rich girl. All, all over her. Yes, through the people, I saw it clearly. Of course, the stains are invisible now, what with the coat being such a dark color. But I assure you, that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it is sullied with blood, that's for sure. But it's not Mr. Windebank's blood, is it? 
No, that's right. It's Mr. Mason Milverton's blood from when McGilded stabbed him two months ago. It's so annoying. If they'd only accept Hurley's chemical analysis, we could prove that. But they won't, so unfortunately, we can't use it as evidence to support our case. Bother. Something's gonna happen where Iris accidentally like shoots off her gun and um, his blood is gonna turn green. And then they'll be like, wow, his blood did change color science. And she told us that Victor may not escape. Did, did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out of the room? That's right. After the broker fell to the floor, she started walking over. Over where exactly? In the direction of the storeroom door, to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated. And then... The girl dropped the gun through the peephole onto the floor of my side of the door. But why on earth would she do such a thing? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. Without thinking, I went and picked it up. I suppose I was worried of just leaving it there in case any more tragedies took place. I don't believe you. So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime. Yes, it was yours truly. Hmm. I left the clear up to my lackeys and left. Clear up? We made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Miss Whistle and Flutley are told us to tidy up. He thinks he's a blooming mum sometimes. I don't believe you, he's clearly lying. Yeah, he's clearly lying! Well, I was paying you enough, by God. Ugh. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawnbrokery that night, was it by any chance with the second disc in your jacket pocket? I'm not going to tell you. You're like a bull at the gate, aren't you? Whoa, hello. Gentlemen! Something wrong, Sunshine? That should be my line! You do realize you were just violently shaking Mr. Skulkin! Blimey, this tea's a bit of a little gun, ain't he? What was going on just now? You saw him? He grabbed me, Whistle. Why the blazes, he said. Didn't you mention the third gun when we got you down at the station? And why didn't you? Cause we didn't know nothing about it. Or that flaming people on the door. Um, sorry about that. I can be prone to losing my rag sometimes. Not hurt, are you? Go oh, blimey. See the way he's looking at me? I'm telling you, this deed gives me the willies. The D gives him the willies. Sure does. That was strange. The inspector doesn't normally get quite as worked up as that. He wouldn't normally grab someone. No, that wasn't like Rexy at all. He's normally all sweetness and light, no matter what I say to him. That's because you're a famous author. Yes, well, I think you might be a special case, Cyrus. Well, anyway, that was definitely out of character. Lord! Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. Explain yourself, officer. I have the results of the test that were ordered earlier, my lord. His story makes sense. <laughs> ah, the blood on the accused overcoat. Thank you, officer. Very well, the cross-examination is hereby temporarily suspended. I presume you have no objection, counsel. Um, no, my lord. I feel like my chair is sinking a little. Let me fix it. Well, there you have it. The report, please, inspector. Let me fix the chair! Where is it? There we go. Ah! Just, uh... 
traces of a human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. From the extent of the stains, it would appear that they were the result of spattering following a gunshot wound. End of report. Goodness me. It was a wound, but it wasn't a gun. It was a knife. Ew, gross. See? What did I tell you? No, the blood on that coat is not Mr. Windbanks. What on earth makes you say that, Council? The coat originally belonged to Magnus McGilded. Just before his coat was deposited at Windbanks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Win Mason Milverton. So the blood on that overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Well, the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nibonese friend? Shut your face. Sorry? Two months ago, in this very courtroom... Did you not argue fervently for McGilda's innocence? That was before I had all the facts, you freaking loser! Shut your mouth! And yet, now that the man is dead, you brand him as a murderer. Your conduct shatters any shred of respect you may have earned for yourself in this country. I don't care about your stupid country, so shut up! Ah, but that was... I call it a bloody disgrace! Treachery, that's what it is! Hmm, how to determine whether the blood on that coat is two months old or not? Even a stereoscope can help the answer to that problem pop out. But, but... We use Mr. Shorms especially for... She only is a detective, not a chemist. But you put such faith in a chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm, in a when I'm a communications officer. I held out Perosky to starving boy, and they ran away crying. Her luck, Sholmes, is barely more the figment of the public's imagination. His name carries no weight in this courtroom. No weight at all. How could you say that? Victory is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. How do you write of such a conclusion, sir? As the witness said, the accused's coat was spattered with blood of the victim. The only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known that fact is if he saw it happen. Or if he saw the dried blood on the coat when he wore it, you dumb idiots! In other words, his testimony is solid and the conclusion is singular. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That is the whole truth. Ah. My lord. Been a long battle this one, but this old war horse has something to say now, if you please. Mr. Foreman. As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. No! I don't want to do another summation examination! No! I don't want to do it! No! You Guilty. You say, you say. You say, you say, you say. I thought we were at the end. I thought this was gonna be it. That's why, even though it's two hours, I didn't stop because I thought we would be it. Well, it appeared the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a unanimous verdict. <laughs> He works at the police, what does he mean? And the defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. Uh, what do you mean consistently failed? We just... We just talked to him once. We just started pressing everything once and... What do you mean consistently failed to unpick? We found out he was lying about his... his his history, we found out he was lying about his involvement in the whole thing. Like, what the frick are you smoking? <sighs> well, I stream just like with Somnium Files. Somnium Files and, um, 13 Sentinels. <laughs> Here's to any attempt you may make at unpicking the juror's decisions being equally successful. Uh, I don't believe it. After I've come so far, in the end, it doesn't even matter. How's it all unraveling on me so fast?
How very distressing. To be held in such low esteem. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? Officer? You've delivered the report now. That will be all, thank you. It occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Naruhodo. That scientific truths are determined not by science, but by none other than the human mind. I know that voice. Am I going mad? Ah! Herlock! Mr. Sholmes! What? What is the meaning of this? Look at his leg! Surprise, Charlie says, please. JT, the girls are playing Danganronpa 2. I know, and I want to watch them play it, but I want to play Danganronpa myself! Oh, darling! Yeah, that's also what I want to do. I just want to do, like, full day streams of me playing Danganronpa 2. As well. What business do you have here, detective? The last I heard, you were recuperating in hospital. Well, I'm gonna find some free weekend days and I'm just gonna do it! As well I would be, had I not been set upon by an errand. Time for all weekend stream of Jelly playing Danganronpa. I, I really want to do it. What errand? Holy! It really is! It's really you! You're awake at last! Yes, good day, Iris. I appear to be rather late to rise. My apologies. Now, my lord, if you will humor me. I can't watch. Can't watch what? Danganronpa? Do you want to play it also? In what manner, sir? It's a 40 hour game, so one full weekend. Holy crap. I have something of a great importance I wish to give to a young lawyer over there. I need no more than five minutes. Would you be so kind as to spare us the time? Hmm. What say you to this, Lord Van Zeeks? This trial has taken many hours of the court's time, having spent so long already. Exactly! Having spent so long already, we don't want to go wasting any more precious time. As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem churlish to deny the defense a mere five minutes. Bah! Oh, you just don't want to deal with Danganronpa? That's how it was at first. I was like, uh, it seems quite a little iffy to me because it seems a little like violent and scary. But then I was like, you know what? It's another visual novel. I really want to play another visual novel. So let's do it. But well then, counsel, you have five minutes. Are you gonna give me the second disc? Did you play 999? Heck yeah, I did! I played the whole um, 999 series. The Nonary games. I love them. My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Mr. Sholmes, are you all right now? <laughs> all right, I'm all wrong. Jelly really loved um, Zero Time to Lamb. I love... No. Zero Time to Lamb was the last one? No, I didn't like... I love Virtue's Last Reward. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it play it. Uh, did I record that? I don't think I recorded it. Did I? I definitely didn't um, record me playing uh, Virtue's Last Reward. Did I do Zero? T I don't think I did Zero Time Dilemma either. Maybe I should. I should go back and do it. <laughs> Sorry? I've only just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for five minutes. But I fear even that may prove too much for me. Pray forgive, should I pass out? Um, let's make this discussion as short as possible. Hurley, this place is full of idiots. None of them can see how wonderful your chemical blood analysis is. Ah, oh, well, that concoction of mine was really just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. I never took the trouble to refine it for appraisal by the scientific community, an oversight on my part. Right. Modesty? Surely not. But enough of that. I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. What's that? A lavender furushiki wrapping? A leaving present from Miss Susato. From Miss Susato? If possible, matters were to be settled without me giving you this. 
Those were her instructions when she asked me to do this favor. I don't understand. Mistress has her foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by both means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Nanhodo, fighting fairly as you are wont to do, won't find yourself in considerable peril. At that very moment of crisis, you were to be given this small parcel. Those are the dear lady's instructions. A leaving present from Susato-san. Whatever could it be? What is this? Oh! It's the machine I made! Ah. Meow. Look, I use this as my latest invention. What is that? I call it the cat flapper mat. I can make a cat fly for any little fright from like wacky in seconds. So what does this have to do with the case? What's Susie up to? Miss Susato muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. What? Didn't she say something like that? I bought some NFC tags so I can transfer any characters to my game now. Nice! <laughs> you really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Oh, well, that's extremely flattering. No, I'm sorry to say. That I've been a complete failure. Who are your, like, dream characters, your dream villagers, Regal? Whatever does she mean by that, Mr. Sholmes? That night, when you left Windbanks in pursuit of the thieves, Miss Susato made use of this contraption for a certain purpose. That is your answer, dear fellow. Not at all cryptic, then. Susan's of Sun used this cat, cat flapper mat that night, but why? Why? Top 10, huh? Yeah. Your five minutes is over. We're out of time already. I was hoping that she would have the second disc, but... Uh, Graydon probably has the second disc. So what the heck does a cat flap on my hat to do with anything? I'm grateful to you for affording us that brief recess, Mr. Reaper. I need no thanks, detective. After all, the die is cast. Is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their leanings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a summation examination. But any attempt to alter the verdict now would be utterly futile. I wonder... Mr. Naruhuro. Yes? The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? The rest is down to me... I need to be careful here. If I make a wrong move, the trial will end. Badly. My lord, the defense requests... I'm sorry, I'm gonna walk through. <laughs> I don't- I don't- Cat flap a mat. Uh... Further cross-examination. We were never really done, were we? No, we weren't. Further cross-examination. Oh, my knees. Oh, they hurt. The jurors have spoken. Protocol dictates that you may not cross-examine a new witness now. The defense is not asking for the cross-examination of a new witness. Rather, to continue with the one of an existing witness. What? It would appear that a rather important detail has escaped your attention, Mr. Reaper. My lord! Requesting you to interrupt the cross-examination. 
Thank you, officer. Very well. Temporary suspended. Assume you have no objection, counsel. Oh, uh, no, my lord. So nobody can say anything, then. If Luna asks to resume his cross-examination of Mr. Craydon, the court is obliged to allow it. This is absurd! Your face is absurd. I would remind those present that this is my courtroom. I concur that the defense is entirely within its rights to request the continuation of the cross-examination. However, I will not permit an unremitting protraction of these proceedings. Therefore, I have decided to afford the defense one final opportunity in concluding the cross-examination. Counsel, you must choose but one statement from the witness's testimony and but one piece of evidence to present in support of your arguments against it. A single chance to present evidence? Well... If, following that, the situation remains unchanged, I shall move to adjudication. Is that clear, counsels? You will not press the witness any further. I can't press him anymore? My lord. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Walk through. <laughs> For real. Hmm, a single statement and a single piece of evidence. Most generous. Well then, Mr. Nadhuru. It's high time I fell in a dead faint. <laughs> I leave this in your capable hands. <laughs> in no particular order. Cherry, Zucker, yeah. Adi, Shino, yeah. Raymond, Hamlet, Anka, Lucky, Judy, Zell. I love Zell. He's, oh, yeah, he's, hey, guess I got a Raymond card. <laughs> Ask me again tomorrow and a few will probably be switched out. Then who's your ultimate ultimate that will never be switched out? Miss! Master Sholmes! Like my ultimate ultimates are Fang, Marina, Genji, Zell, Dottie. Why can't I think of it? Jeremiah, Lily. To stand so insouciantly before the court in a state of such high fever. Either the man has extraordinary strength of mind or an extraordinary lack of feeling. I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of the antechambers. Right? Fang, Marina, Genji, Dadi, Zell, Jeremiah, Lily. Yeah, and then three for freeze. Strike a man when he's down, why don't you? Well then, counsel, are you fully prepared? If this is one piece against one statement, that means this has to be the end. Yes. One statement, one piece of evidence. If you only get one shot, one opportunity, I won't let Mr. Sholmes down or Iris. Hamlet, Adi, Shino, Anka, Cherry. Whoa. I see, I see. And I won't waste this final chance that susato san has given me. This is going to decide the entire outcome of the trial. Very well then, under the terms I've outlined, you may resume the cross-examination. While these ruffians are jostling with the broker, I was still needed to enter to the shop. When I went back to the natural with a counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the people in the door, though. The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the people, so I picked it up and made my escape. Okay, so since we only get one piece of evidence, I'm assuming it's going to be the cat flap moment. So it has to be a statement with either this. I picked it up and made my escape. Or, or this, um, there's no flap. 
Is it just me or is there no flap? <gasps> 1 a.m. There's nothing on the door. 1.30 a.m. There's a mark. Susato made that. Wait, but then how did he know about the people? This doesn't make any sense. Because if he came here during the day, the people wasn't there. Because a short time before the murder took place, there was no people. How does he know about the people? I feel like I'm betraying Butch because he was one of my first villagers in the first AZ game I ever played, Wii version. Uh, Marina was... The reason why I like Marina, like everyone likes Marina, but Marina was my very first villager in New Leaf and she never left. Cause you know how in New Leaf people would just randomly go and you can't really stop them from leaving? But she never left and she was with me from the beginning. So I'm just like, Marina, you're the best. Um, so I present this here then. That was cherry for me. Oh, that's so sweet. What on earth is that eccentric contraption council? Ooh, it's my cat flapper mat, my lord. It makes a way for cats to get in and out of a room. It can cut through any door you can think of and make a new little door in the middle of it. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. Small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners having to open the main door. I'm sure we can all work that out for ourselves. But that cat lover's contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Oh, uh, really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there was no cat flap in the pawnbroker's door. Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I failed to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. Hamlet is my top number one villager. Dang. Perhaps it would help if I described it fun its function in another way then. This contraption is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine it practically in no time at all. I, I beg your pardon? A peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after a murder of Mr. Windebank had taken place. That's right. According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, and Shortens. Yes, the three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this advice at the time. Your assistant did what? There was a people in the storeroom door. I could attest to that. Because I looked through the people myself in order to see inside the locked storeroom. This is ludicrous. What are you trying to say? Of course there was a people in the door. I said as much as my testimony. How else could I have witnessed the crime for pity's sake? Audie, I like because of the story behind her. She know because she's based off of One Piece and Anka, I just like aesthetically. The story of Audie is so cute. And I'm just like, oh, that's like props to them for making her based off that grandma. It's so freaking sweet. She know is, okay. She know I liked originally because of her look, but then I got her on my island and she is really freaking sweet. She is a cutie pie. I love her. She's great. Anka, I just like aesthetically. Yeah, Anka's cute, but she doesn't do it for me. Whoops, I pushed the button. I liked Anka before the whole meme thing. What meme with Anka? Yes, how could you? What? Console, kind of say what you mean. Don't look it up? Okay, I'm not looking it up. All right, it's time. Time to strike the final blow. Oh, this is it, final blow. What I mean is this, my lord. My assistant made the people in the storm door, and until such time as she did, the door had no hole in it to look through. What? No! This is a farce. Are you really suggesting that the people in the door was? Yes, it was created only after the incident had taken place by my judicial assistant using this device. Your assistant has tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions. 
That is the most serious act of vandalism. For which I humbly apologize, my lord. It was in the few minutes that I left the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Basically, zone ton. I don't know what that is. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information, it becomes apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony is riddled with holes. Riddled with. Explain yourself, counsel. The majority of Mr. Graydon's testimony that appears to incriminate the defendants is based upon what he witnessed through the people in the storeroom door. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in the back. However, if at the time of the incident, that people did not yet exist in the door, there's no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. Grr. In short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Ugh. Old is, is there any credence in this revelation? I like most of the hamsters, by the way. I think there's maybe one I don't like. They would all be up there. Oh. So you would create a hamster island then if you could. If you could have all the, like as many villagers as you want, you'd want all the hamsters. I want all the bunnies. None whatsoever, as my learned friend must surely realize. I exactly. This is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me. I'm afraid not, sir. Of course it is. Do you seriously expect people to believe that plaything can cut through a solid wooden door? Oh yes, I designed it to be very powerful. It can cut through even the toughest of doors. I have all the hamsters in my village right now, including Marlo, the new one. Nice! That's absurd. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. What? Lucky! Cooey! Time for dinner! Meow. <laughs> well? Ah! Young lady, this is the old belly. One does not make a cat flaps in the old cannelling and the old berry! What is going on? We're making cat doors, that's what's going on. I, I'm not done yet, don't worry. This doesn't mean that the people in the storeroom door at the Windbanks was made by your machine. And there's no way you can prove that it was. No, but it's easy. What? The cat flaps my cat flapper mat creates are all of a fixed size. And the dimensions of the people at the Windbanks are an exact match. Ooh. Old Silky's lost for words. Excellent work, Iris. Thank you. And now it's my learned student friend's turn to be lost for words, I feel. Nope, I have evidence to prove that the people was made after the murder. So shut your mouth. I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your eastern island home. Well, yes, that's true then you may have some difficulty in establishing all of the facts. For the sake of argument, let us assume the people has dimensions that are a perfect fit for this contraption. In that case, when was the people cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. Don't be startled. I know the answer. I have the proof. What is the purpose of your line of inquiry, Lord Van Zeex? We have to prove when the people was made because you can totally have seen it if it was made before the murder. It's very simple, my lord. The defense argues that the people was created after the incident using this device. But now that the perpetrator has returned to her native land, she cannot testify to the fact. There is no proof. I do have proof. Uh... And for as long as the defense remain unable to prove when the people was made. My learned friend's claims amount to nothing more than a baseless accusation. Uh, why are you freaking out? I got the evidence. Indeed, that is so, Lord Von Zeeks. Well, counsel, I, um, what kind of phone you got? I got a Note 8. I want the Galaxy Flip, though. The one that goes like that, not the one that goes like this. 
My phone is slowly dying. I'm not getting like email or text message notifications anymore. I even restarted my phone and it still doesn't do it. So, hmm. Don't go up now, Runo. This is time to create your own opening and force your way through. I don't know if I can do this, but I do know one thing. Susan is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. Delete all the hentai videos. <laughs> oh yes, I will delete all of my Animal Crossing screenshots. <laughs> but well, the Council for the Defense will present evidence to support the claim made. Proof that the people in the door of Windbank's storeroom was created after the event and not before. Oh, but which photo do I show? Before the murder took place? I'm, I'm guessing this. What are you? A print from that detective's infernal cameras again. My judicial assistant, Miss Sasato Mikotoba, is an extremely intelligent and capable woman. Which is why I never had any cause to doubt that she would have considered this scenario and made sure I had the necessary proof. And the necessary proof is this photographic print, Council? This print shows a scene in the shop moments after the defendant entered the premises. Agreed. And it also shows the accused mercilessly wielded a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. But, but more to the point, it pictures the storeroom door in the background. Let me see that print again. I, I don't believe it. This really is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom is completely devoid of a people of any description. Ah. Mr. Graydon. You couldn't possibly have witnessed a crime as you claim to have done. Because at the time it happened, there was no people in the door. Uh, in other words, your testimony is a catalog of lies. <laughs> Sweet justice. Hold on! I'm satisfied that the defense has substantiated its claim beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness's testimony was entirely fa fallacious. That's not the only thing we now know beyond all reasonable doubt. My learned friend's assistant's guilt can no longer be denied. The woman tampered with the crime scene. So have other people! Are you- <sighs> But more importantly... Good lord, there's more Lord Van Zeeks. Even he's fed up with him. The defense may have established a reprehensible instance of perjury. But that is no proof that this man is the victim's killer. Yes, that's right. What? I was there at the scene. It's true. And I was shot in the arm. It's true. But that's all. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances... I am the victim here. Oh, please, no. I don't believe this. But they're right, as it stands now. I don't have any definitive proof that he is the culprit. Still, he can't run his way out of it now. Iris? You know what they say? There's no point locking the cat's door after the cat has bolted. Isn't that right, Runo? As Hurley always says, one lie begets another. No, wait, that might have been a line I wrote for him in one of my stories. What are you trying to get at? Well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did you give false testimony to the court, but the lies you told make no sense. 
Make no sense? What do you mean by such a remark? What you said in your testimony reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. In other words, there's a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? This is provocative talk, Council. Won't you enlighten the court? Explain this alleged inconsistency. Iris was right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed uh, by the lies in the witness statements. They show that Mr. Graydon had knowledge of something he shouldn't have known anything about. Namely... Isn't it the bloodstains on the coat? Sorry, I'm gonna walk through. Um... Mm. Yeah. Right? It's, um... The bloodstains. Yeah. The bloodstains that were present on Miss Lestrade's coat. That's right. The victim's blood splattered all over her when she shot him. But how could you possibly have known that? Obviously, because I saw her do it through the people in the... The point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. Then let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon? that you knew of the existence of the peephole in the storeroom door. What? Well, obviously, I... Ah! Ah! Uh. Has the cuff got your tongue, witness? The peephole in the door was made after the incident occurred. And once I returned to the shop, having failed to catch the two burglars, Scotland Yard's investigators arrived immediately. <laughs> cat? I'm a kitty cat. Since that time, the police have been at Windbanks constantly, carrying out their investigation. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Um, well, yes, of course, um... The place is chock full of pawned Oscars, and my lads have to thoroughly examine them all. So I gave the order to have the officers work around the clock and shift so we get through it all. And consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Graydon, could have gained access to the shop. Therefore, you should have known nothing about the people in the storeroom door. Yeah, how did you find out about it? So the fact that its existence forms the basis of your testimony is completely inexplicable. And yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place through the people in the door. I have photographic proof that the people didn't exist, you freaking idiot! So his, his testimony is nothing, you freaking idiot! How on earth is that possible? Um... Could I have a word, please, Lord Van Zix? What? Speak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put on my report. There's really nothing more I can add to this testimony, so if it's all the same to you... Permission denied. Because Nashans and Rinko are still there, you can't leave, that's the whole point. That's why you're here, to keep an eye on them. Oh. It's not all the same to me, Inspector. Not at all. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. Uh, of course, sir. Mr. Graydon. You shouldn't have known about the existence of that people. Which would only mean that you must have been informed about it by somebody else. Boo. Stop there, my learned friend. You realize, I trust, that the words you just uttered have extremely serious implications. 
Yes. But the defense believes that the details about the case that Mr. Graydon claims to have seen must have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. And, in fact, considering a particular clue we have, there's really only one person that could be. Who is the person in question, counsel? Who gave this witness details of the crime scene to facilitate his false testimony? Mm, it's not any of us three, because he was in the hospital. She is gone. She is next to me. He is dead. She is the defendant. He is the person... He's not... Oh... Uh... Not him, because he had no idea. They have no idea. I'm stuck between Strongheart or Gregson. But he- hmm, because he's looking out for the stolen information. But he really- his presence really wasn't in the trial. So I'm gonna guess- Greg, walk through. Who gave the witness? Yep, it's him! It's Gregson. The truth is, it can only happen you, Inspector Gregson. But- me? Oh yeah, because they were talking, like, at one time at some- during someone's cross-examination. You'd better have some proof to substantiate such a rash claim, my learned friend. Consider the fact that we have only been aware of Mr. Ashley Graydon's identity for the last few hours. We learned of it only during the course of the trial today. Indeed, preparations for his testimony were made with great urgency during our hour-long recess. While the police ex executed the subpoena and brought the man here from communication station, and then they had time to brief him. Oh. And until that time, Mr. Graydon would have had no idea. No inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Are you suggesting that until such time he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it's reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people. It was only once Mr. Graydon was in the stand that he realized his position. That he would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third intruder. You're suggesting to the court that it was while this trial was in progress that he received the information. So that he could commit perjury in order to save his skin. Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation and that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This, this is blue outrage. Why would I be giving away details of our investigations to this fellow, eh? Hmm. I was summoned to his lordship's chambers during the recess in any case. Have you forgotten that? Quite true. I had a number of questions regarding the events that transpired at the pawnbrokery. Which means... The first time these two laid eyes on another was after the proceedings resumed following the recess. Since then, they've been in full view and the stand where such illicit, illicit discussions couldn't possibly have occurred. It happened right in front of our faces. During Gina's... examination. Ew, I've just remembered something, Reno. What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Ginny was testifying. Oh yes, now you mention it. When the bailiff was dispatched to relieve, retrieve McGilda's music box from the scene of crime. That's it. It was during that testimony. I remember finding it strange at the time. Mr. Graydon and the inspector seemed to be having some sort of secret discussion. It would have been possible for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. You little toe rag! You make it all this up! I'm- I'm a respectable Scotland Yard inspector for crying out loud. Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? Cause you're also involved in the government information scandal. Admittedly, you wouldn't have any reason to do something like that for no gain. But perhaps... It was part of a deal of some kind. Then it starts to make more sense. What's deal, counsel? 
I wonder if perhaps in exchange for details about the people at the crime scene, Mr. Graydon agreed to give a certain something to the inspector. I'm sure I need not remind uh, the inspector that, if found to be true, striking a deal of any kind with a witness. Could they have been any more obvious? Exactly. They were like clearly turned around and like <laughs> would be considered a gross case of malfeasance. Will, will I? It's becoming clear that jumping in with accusations is this Nipponi student's speciality. I'm shocked they didn't show them doing a huddle. <laughs> I don't do that. But with the stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to baseless charges. It is incumbent on the defense now to present evidence in support of this diabolical claim. I'm going to strangle this man. Evidence. Just what are you proposing that the inspector demanded of the witness in return? The second disc, you freaking idiot! The court will see proof of this alleged deal. I'm sorry, walk through time. Duh! If Inspector Gregson really did strike a deal with Mr. Graydon, then logically, there's only one thing he could have asked for. That must be it. Rina, do you think it could be? Yes. It's the missing link that would join all the dots together in this puzzle. And let's press you for an answer now, Counsel! What evidence explains the nature of the alleged deal the Inspector Gregson made with this? Inspector Rexon, besides this murder, is it not true that you've been working on another very important case? What are you getting at now, Sunshine? Is it possible that this other top secret case? Rocky and Bowinkle, for real. It is what's alluded to in this newspaper article here. The classified secrets being leaked overseas from the Ministry of Justice. How, how to bleed a neural could you? We discovered, during the course of this trial, the music box deposited at Winnebanks by Magnus Gilded. A special music box designed to play two discs at once. It would seem very likely now that encoded in the, par disc, uh, in the pair of discs that were in McGilded's possession are delete classified secrets. So I put it to you, Inspector that in order to recover the second of the discs containing those secrets. You covertly made a deal with Mr. Graydon in which you exchanged the disc for details of the case. You, you little lard! Hold On the day of the incident, when we met you at Windebanks, you said this. I'll be taking down whatever it is, but I'll just have to yell it. Thank you very much. So hand it over. No, yeah, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine, that is. Mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGill has to be taken in as evidence now. Scotland Yard already knew at the time, isn't that right? That Magnus the Gilded was involved in the stealing of government secrets. My orders were to cover the medium used to convey secrets leaked from the Ministry. And do it on the QT. Strictly hush hush. And that explains why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the court, you objected so heavily, I presume. Because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. Blimey, not likely. I mean, I wasn't that sure of it myself. I realized there was a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely. Surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of these music book discs, you did inveal, indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness. To aid and abet this man in giving false testimony. There's no other way that Mr. Graydon could have known of the existence of the people. It's the only explanation a deal was struck between these two men. Yeah, 
you're going to jail, you're going to jail. I'm going back to Japan. I will never come back to Britain. If, and I stress if, this sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth, it would mean that the second disc is, as we speak, here in this very courtroom. Wait, what? In this courtroom? How could you possibly make a claim like that? Because Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? What's that supposed to mean, eh? As a seasoned policeman, the inspector will have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would have insisted on having the article agreed upon in the pl palm of his hand. Good gracious, then you mean to say... Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his position. He has the second disc actually on his person. The defense demands that the inspector is searched at once. Definitely. They could only have struck a deal with each other when Ginny was testifying before. And Gregsy hasn't moved from the witness stand since. My lord, please. Order an examination of his personal effects immediately. Hmm. Well, Inspector? This young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He does not be in my profession quite enough. However, if it'll put this matter to bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, then I'll happily submit to a body search. What? He's going to agree to it. I presume you're aware of the precipice on which you now teeter, my learned student friend. You've made a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. If following the search of the inspector's personal effects, no disc is found. You will be deemed unfit for court service, this trial will end, and my country's government will formally demand of yours that you are severely reprimanded. This sounds serious. Indeed, to have a visiting student make such defamatory remarks about our country's most senior police force is not something Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening Runa because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. It's true. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. The disc must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. Very well, Council. You know the implications, so let me ask you one final time. Yes, my lord. Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? Is it search someone else? Aha! Yes, the defense formally demands a search be conducted. Well, don't say you weren't warned. But your typical Nipponi stubbornness may well land you in hot water this time. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. I am going to strangle him. Fair enough, I've got nothing to hide. He's too calm. He's too calm of a cucumber. Ready, well then. Bailiff cons- Wait, didn't I say conduct a search of someone else? The defense demands a search, but not of Inspector Gregson. What? Now what's all this? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? I thought you wanted to search me. No, no, Inspector. Not you. Somebody else. What's the mean of all this, eh? Lost to that last, have you, you sunshine? The court shouldn't have to put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. Be quiet, all of you. Oh, it was Iris. Reno's doing what you all told him to do and having the courage of his convictions. So you should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith. Because that's the British way.
Well said, young lady. Indeed, this court is in awe of the Defense Council's conviction and eagerly awaits his next words. You what? Now don't be hasty, my lord. Now he's freaking out. If I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today, I'm fairly sure that I know who has that disc at the moment. There's only one person that can be. Counsel, of whom do you request the search now? It's gotta be Nash, because he was, for some reason, he was shaking him. So Nash. So he's the only other person he touched. Of my lord, Mr. Nash Skulkin. Well, I never. Eee, blimey, me, him. Very well then, bailiff. Restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects. Oh, why are you freaking out? Please, my lord. Inspector? Scotland Yard, um, has to object to the search. But you were so far up before. Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Eh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and the defense have the authority to object. But, but Lord Van Ziggs, I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. But personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Ah! Bailiff, carry out the search. Can we just reach the end, please, please, please? Now, old animal, I, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, you're innocent, don't worry. Nothing about no disc. C cut it out! I just want to reach the end. Please, it's been three hours. Ah! Uh, yeah, my lord. In, in the witness's pocket. I found this. Thank the lord. Good lord, that's... Another music box disc. And I know nothing about it. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. At this point, I'm too tired to be like, ha ha! Vindication. That is the second music box disc left behind by Magnus McGilded. Is it not? Inspector Gregson. Ugh. Oh! What a Mr. Skulkin, what have you to say for yourself? Go on, Ben. I mean, just go on, Flame and Ben. I swear I didn't know nothing about that disc. Honest to God, now they're dragging it out. Counsel, would you please explain what exactly is going on here? The alleged deal that was struck between this witness was between this witness and this detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then, for pity's sake, why on earth was that man in possession of the disc that the inspector traded for the information? Inspector Gregson is a shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. But at one particular point in this trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior for a brief moment. I don't recall what unusual behavior. Yeah, see, now they're dragging it out for no reason except to just make this long and like, oh my gosh, this is so epic, but it's not. It was, yes, during my cross-examination of Mr. Graydon. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawn broker you that night, oh my gosh, there was a third gun. Yo, why are you shaking him? Uh, this is all flashback, so that's why I'm skipping the dialogue. Yeah, he did it all. Thought me Nogan was gonna fall clean off, I did. Skip, 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 skip. I was wishing I'd be born me as, as me brother I was. And what exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I ain't got a clue! He just suddenly turned and grabbed me and whistled like that and started shaking me. Why the blazes didn't you mention that they're gone when we got you down the station? That's what he said. Yelled it right down my ear hole, he did. Me head's still throbbing now. Hmm. The way the detective behaved then was extremely out of character. But looking back now, it must have been then that he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gregson created for himself in order to hide the disc. Well, bless my wig, he hid it. You. But I'm afraid I failed to comprehend the motive here. If the detective had acquired the disc he was after, 
Why on earth would uh, he produce you? Oh, I didn't know the mass pocket is a court of law. He could have submitted DI to my evidence. Because he's not allowed to, because of government secrets, because someone else is telling him not to do it. <laughs> it would appear, my lord, that the inspector was not at liberty to do that. I have not. As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. I'm going to bite my controller. In rage. My lord, I swear. Hush, hush. Hush, hush, a top secret assignment, is it? As far as we're aware, the information stolen comes from confidential government communications. Oh, whoops. I keep rage resetting my controller. It would seem that if information were to be revealed in court as evidence, it would be problematic. Does that sum up the situation, Inspector? I'm operating under direct orders from the Ministry. I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to answer that question. So, realizing there was a chance that you may be searched here in court. You took steps to hide the disc you had acquired from the witness. Ah, oh, what does this mean? He only pretended to attack Mr. Skulkin in order to get close enough to him. To slip the second disc into his pocket. So it was all a pretense. Well now, Inspector Gruxman, and you, Mr. Graydon. Are you prepared to admit to the accusation made against you of this alleged deal? I think we spent like 20 minutes all about the Oh, where is the second disc? Oh my gosh, there was a deal! And it's just such a huge waste of time, oh my gosh. Admit to it, yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon, I am going to smack you. Clearly our Eastern, Eastern visitor has had an uncommonly active imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed that disc to the inspector. Just put autoplay. Oh, I could. <gasps> Artsy, how you doing? Thanks for joining. It's been so long. I hope you've been well. I don't, I don't know if it was a JoJo reference. I'm just so tired, but, but then. How do you explain the reason why you knew about the people? I'm under no obligation to explain. What? Yes, I lied in my testimony. That I admit. So sentence me accordingly. But that is all I admit. I am going to slap them all. Men are useless. Murder? Leaking government secrets? Striking a deal with a detective? I'm happy to be here, even though the show must be almost over for tonight. Just want to stop by and see how you're doing. I I don't know if it's going to be over. I thought it was going to be over like like 40 minutes ago, but we're still on the last case and I'm going to strangle people. But I'm doing well. I just want this to end so I can finally rest my voice and go to sleep and play some more Animal Crossing. All of it is this young Easter man's fancy. I have no idea what any of that is about. Looking pretty sweaty toast from being tired of this. I'm, I'm getting hot because I'm getting so mad. <laughs> well, what about you then, Inspector Gregson? Do you admit to making a deal with Mr. Graydon in order to acquire the disc? Of course he's not gonna admit it. He's gonna be like, I'm an upstanding policeman. Ladies and gents of the jury. As Scotland Yard, Inspector, I will declare this and nothing more. You need to finish this today, because next week we gotta start Danganronpa. <laughs> I'm acting in the best interest of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. That's what they all say. Do you know say is getting just as mad? <laughs> He's radiating toasty energy. So, as members of the public of this fine country, I'd like to think that justice will be your guiding light to when you're making your decisions. You're going to let an innocent person Take the fall for murder just because of Ministry Street Gates that you were inept to find yourself? You freaking... It's quite a quandary indeed. Rarely have I encountered such extraordinary tumultuousness in the concluding of a trial. Is it going to conclude? Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence presented, I believe it is time that we put the matter to the jury for their final leanings. 
Well now, as a fellow servant of queen and country, I must say I sympathize with the old inspector. Yes, he's a dependable man, I'm quite sure. In service, one becomes a good judge of character. You're all terrible judges of character. Even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. Well, as a fellow professional, I'd like to put my faith in the detective, really. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idols. Stop. Detective is very much trust in his eyes. More than this, I cannot say. I don't believe it. These six jurors are freaking idiots. They're going to believe Gregson if they declare their decision now. Is Jenny going to be found guilty? If I don't manage to produce some definitive evidence right now, then we're going to lose. Either some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Windebank or stole those government secrets. Or some evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. Well then, counsel. I think it is time I impose on the jurors to declare the final decisions new. That is, unless you have some compelling evidence you have thus far not presented to the court. If I just let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leanings, Gina will be found guilty. So there's no choice then, Reno. You have to throw some more evidence at them. <laughs> I'm, I'm going insane, guys. This is it now. It all comes down to this. Who do I present evidence against? Gregson or Graydon? Yeah, I don't care about thinking anymore. I just want to finish, so... Uh, as much as I hate this, it's brilliant. Pick Inspector Gregson here, and then... Inspector Gregson. There is one final piece of evidence I would like you to see. Eh, we'll stop them. If you refuse to acknowledge that you did in fact strike a deal with the witness here today, then you leave us no choice but to examine this piece of evidence thoroughly. Well, go on. This is my last chance. It looks like I'm going to have to force his hand here. One final piece of evidence to get this detective to admit to the deed he clearly struck with Rayton. It is this small music box. Is that Mr. Magaldus Pekerler Music Box Council? Yes, with a disc already in place, ready to play. I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the Music Box again. Only this time. With the second disc we've just discovered set in place as well. Goodness, this does Council. No, wait, I can't let you do that. Why not? I'm just- I'm ready for this to be over. <laughs> I- It's cause I- Again, you- you know what things lead to another, but this game, like Ace Attorney games, take forever to reach the point, and I'm just like, I'm gonna strangle you. What are they arguing about now? I wasn't listening. They- they s literally spent 30 minutes you made a deal and bleh, bleh, bleh. no, I didn't. It's all your imagination. But we, 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 we. Yep, useless stuff. Because, um, well, because it's got nothing to do with this case. That's why it's got everything to do with this case. That's why he came into the store and killed him. Not true, Inspector. Hey, the defense has already proposed. That the sounds heard by the court earlier from this music box were part of a Morse code message. This is every Ace Attorney game, that's why I stopped playing them. Yeah, like the the first couple of cases is like very straightforward, but then the last one, the last one always has to be super convoluted and annoying. We know that Morse code compromises two distinct tones. Can I ask one more question? No! Nice Carnegie Mellon shirt. Thank you. It has lasted me years. The defense believes that the second disc contains the second tone needed to complete the message. And now we have a chance to confirm that theory. For crying out loud, Sunshine, we're talking about state secrets here. If you go letting the whole courtroom here confidential information like that, it's it's treason. Then do you admit the charge? That in order to protect the state secrets, you engage in unlawful dealings with the witness. Gore. 
You're mad! If you let that secret information out into the public domain... You'll... You'll be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot! Literal blackmail in court. Let's not forget, Inspector, that you, a Scotland Yard officer, leaked confidential case details to a witness. That you continue to lie to the court, and all because, by fair means or foul, you're determined to do your duty. Well, by fair means or foul, I'm prepared to do mine. Don't you dare! I will stop at nothing to protect my clients. I don't care who I make an enemy of. My lord, if you please. The court must hear the sounds made by the music box. Come on, Van Zeeks, for Pete's sake, I'll stop him! Inspector, you should know my methods by now. I'm a prosecutor. I'm no Scotland Yard puppet. Erk. In this courtroom, my duty is to the law, so let me propose a toast. To uncovering the truth. By fair means or foul. No! Very well, the defense's stance here and that of the prosecution have been made very clear, I feel. Therefore, in accordance with the defense's request, the court will now listen as this music box set in operation once more. Okay, time to put heaven on. This time with the second disc in place and both discs playing simultaneously. Listen to that. It's it's unmistakable now. It's Morse code. All right, all right. I admit it. Whatever you want, but for the love of God, shut that bloom box up. We did it, Reddit. Whoa. Let me ask you again then, Inspector Gregson. <laughs> Cheery toast. Woo. Did you, or did you not, strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Graydon? Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music box disc? Did you reveal the existence of the peephole in the pawnbroker storeroom door, Inspector? I did. What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like the young Eastern lawyer said. And you wanted to defame me, you prick. When the trial resumed after recess and we were stood here in the sand together. That's when he approached me with the deal. Shut up, you imbecile. Shut up! Psst, you there. You're the detective who turned up at the pawnbroker the other day, aren't you? I may have something you're looking for, Inspector. With me at this very moment. So how about a trade? I suggest you accept. Or information that may make certain individuals uncomfortable will soon become very public indeed. I couldn't let that information become public knowledge, not under any circumstances. So I accepted the man's proposal and told him details about the case that should have been put him in the clear. What's your blood pressure monitor say? <laughs> I have no idea, but it's probably very high. The people in the storm door and the blood stains on the overcoat. By giving false testimony, this witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. Inspector, you knew that. Yet you still revealed those details to facil facilitate the witness's perjury. Enough for her to get a name change to bloody toast. <laughs> I did. But then it turned out the people had only been made that night after the incident took place. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, if I'm perfectly honest. Oh no, perjury. Well, Mr. Graydon, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, there's nothing and no one left for you to hide behind. You struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Namely this. You are the third intruder who broke into the pawnbrokery on the night in question. 
And you perpetrated the murder of the proprietor, Mr. Pop Windebank. Mmm, you, you. Traitor! Is he gonna kill? Oh my gosh, I really do not have any evidence. Bailiff, bailiff, restrain that man! At once! Did you really kill him? That's it then. It's all over. No, it's not. Jury hasn't made their decision yet. That went down rather abruptly. No, there's another person and a five gun. No, smooth, smooth, don't jinx it. Please, no, I'm ready to be done. Oh wait, autoplay is there. He snapped his neck. I despised my life growing up. Those thumbs are vile places. I was cursed from birth, born into poverty, the son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarrel all day long. What little money they had was never spent on me. Animal Crossing after this, I need to, I need to relax. So I set about studying, to better myself, to one day escape from that hellhole. And you eventually became a commu communications officer. I admire your determination. But then you decided to try to sell government secrets. Why? This isn't obvious, because I wanted money. Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me in the small hours. I wanted to drown them out, with more money than anyone who lived in that squalor could ever imagine. Then one day, I met him. Mr. Mangus McGilded. Autoplay is going by a little too fast, so I'm not I'm gonna stop. If you squid trash or you have my throw your way if you're interested. All you need to do is go along with me a little plan now. I was to steal the ministry's telegraphic message logs and McGilded would buy them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for the inspections of the ministry's communications office, it was a simple enough task. The Lord of the Devil's Offerings. How easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the seriousness of the crime you were committing. He doesn't care, he wanted money! And for that reason, I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were untraceable. By using the music box. My father was a brickmaker, then my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason Milverton. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He'd once been a music box maker's apprentice. I imagined his skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could generate Morse code. So I sought out my father again, to employ his services. He was skilled with his hands. Oh my. <laughs> it was the first time I'd seen him since I left Slums ten years earlier. That's what she said. Ooh. Look at you, Ashley. What a fine judge you've become, eh? He was a different man to the one in my memory. A thin, frail old man. How did he know Morse code when he was a kid? I don't know. It has to be in the 1900s. This is... I think this is the 1800s. Or is it 1900s? I don't know. Oh wait, this is the Crystal Palace time. Yeah, so 1800s. Because of Victoria. But poverty had never broken him, never corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't tell me if I told him the real reason. So I made up a story. I've got some work for you, Father. I need some music box discs made. Music box discs, eh? A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. I brought the score with me. There are two, actually. I'd be delighted, son. It's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Fetch my tools, will you? They're in the loft. That's how I had him make the two discs. Thereby splitting the information in two, you were taking considerable precautions indeed. It was to protect myself as much as anything. It meant that I could deal with McGilded in two separate transactions. 
the first involved the first of the two discs and the music box for playing them. I exchanged them with McGilded for ten guineas. Then, on the receipt of the second disc, he would pay a thousand guineas. So, what happened on the Omnibus two months ago? Was the second part of the deal? The exchange of the second disc? Yes. I'd sold the man information though that way a number of times already. But it seems he became reluctant to part with his money. But that doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. For why was it uh, on the omnibus two months ago? Your father, Mr. Milverton, was the one dealing with Mr. McGilded and not yourself. When I received the thousand guineas after my first completed dealings with McGilded, I decided to give 200 to my father for his troubles. But my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must be involved in something dubious, and when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, you'll let your old man do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. That was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. Climb into the omnibus, hand over the second disc, and take the money from McGilded. That's it. He had no idea what was actually on the discs I'd asked him to make. He never knew. Just like I'll never know why everything went so horribly wrong that night. All I know is that the disc was taken from him, and he never returned home. So he got his dad killed. Yep. Sad. It was only then I found out what sort of a monster McGilded really was. So after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore my father's name. To exact revenge. Revenge? Did he cause the fire? As anyone with even the remotest knowledge of the man will no doubt be able to imagine. McGilded brought all his wealth and influence to bear in the most despicable of ways. To crush any semblance of justice in his trial. The crime scene was tampered with, evidence was fixed, and witnesses were bribed. That trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched British soil back then. And I walked into that hornet's nest, completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. I'd made plenty of money out of my dealings with McGilded by then. So I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago, I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, there are people in the city willing to do anything you ask. McGilded himself had shown me that. Are, are you saying that? I think you have the picture now. After he twisted everything to his favor in this courtroom to ensure that he walked free. I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice that Monster deserved. That tragic accident following the trial here two months ago was planned and executed by yours truly. McGilda's death that day was caused by this man. Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into your courtroom. What's this, officer? To see that I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There are some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It's time for inspection. I want to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. So that policeman who came to tell McGill that he could examine the omnibus again. That's right, an imposter, hired by me. McGill did use his wealth to manipulate the trial. He paid people to adulterate the omnibus with all manner of false evidence. He threatened witnesses to lie in their testimony. So I gave the man a taste of his own medicine. Once the omnibus was doused in paraffin, 
one of my sham policemen ushered McGill inside and sent him on a one-way journey to hell. An eye for an eye. That's how I avenged my father's death. A spine-chilling account indeed. But that wasn't the end of it for me. There was a loose end, you see. A loose end? Yes, I should think it's obvious. The second disc, which my father had taken to exchange with McGilded. Ah, oh, yes. There was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. Clearly because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. Something from the first time I dealt with McGilded. He died but comes back as a cowboy bebop assassin. No! <laughs> this is the first of two discs and the music box you need to play them. Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. So then, Ash promised ten guineas for you, young man. What? What's this? Windbank's pawnbrokery? Aye, it is a palm broker's ticket. So it is. You can use it to redeem an old skull I've deposited there for you. There's no need to give it a name. Just hand over the ticket and tell the fiend the watchword. I put a jewel in pawn for you. It'll fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it, so it will. Never heard of a palm broker being used in quite a way, that war. Have you not, Mr. Graydon? London's palm brokers are useful places, you know. Each one is like an extremely secure vault. So I knew that if you'd taken steps to hide the disc, it would be in that pawnbrokery somewhere. And that on the night he killed my father, he must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. I remember now that when we first met you at Windbanks that afternoon two days ago, you had a description of Miss Lestrade written down. How did you know who you were looking for? On the trial, that pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. I realized immediately that she was another of McGilded's pawns, that he must have threatened her somehow. I was fairly convinced it would be her who had the ticket. So I started to make some inquiries. I had a strong suspicion the girl would come out of the woodwork on the redemption deadline. And he was absolutely right. And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was wait until the girl went to Windbanks to redeem the articles. But unfortunately, she redeemed only McGilded's overcoat and one disc that was in his pockets. The only important music box with it, the second disc inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. But I was unaware of that fact. Had I not been, I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into the stolen government secrets was progressing. Yeah, I'm I'm dying, guys. I just need this to end. We picked up on the fact that McGilded was involved. Inspector, you've recovered fast. He's not dead. My orders were to recover the stolen information as quickly as possible. So we started gathering the fellow's possessions and examining whatever we could lay our hands on. We had a full-scale investigation going on at the yard, and we, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. Then, when the inspector here took the disc from me in the pawnbrokery that day, I became nervous. I was sure the music box on the second disc was still in this shop somewhere. So I knew that it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. So that's what prompted you to break into the place that same night. With the help of your old friends, the Skulkin Brothers. What happened that night in the pawnbrokery? I can only describe as a nightmare. While Nash and Ringo were searching the counter, I had located the music box I sold to McGilded on the shelves of the forfeit articles. And the second disc was inside. Yes, I'd slipped it into my pocket with a very deep sigh of relief. But then, 
Something entirely unexpectedly ha unexpected happened. Ooh, la, 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 la. What are you doing in my shop? Bang! A gunshot rang out in the shop and I felt a sharp pain in my left arm. The broker fired his gun and the bullet pierced her limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately, I decided to bring my own gun with me that night, just in case. Before I knew what was happening, I'd fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I hadn't intended to fire in his direction, much less kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. It struck him in the middle of his back as he fled through the storeroom door for refuge. A sorry, sorry tale. It all took place in the blink of an eye. I don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified, so I fled. And that's the whole story. That's everything that happened at Windbanks on that wretched night. It's almost 1.30 here. Yeah, it's like 11, almost 11.30 here. I, I've been streaming for three and a half hours now. I'm just ready for this to be done. But watch for another half hour of cutscenes and whatever. Earlier, you called McGilded a monster. A man who used his wealth and influence to distort the facts and escape justice for the crime of murder. What tragic irony. For what you have done is exactly the same. You have become the very monster you saw and despised so deeply in McGilded. Yes, I think I have. Well, this has been a long and exhausting trial. However, it would seem that at last we have arrived at the truth. Murder twice killed the cop just now too. <laughs> Inspector Gregson, what of Mr. Ashley Graydon? He's been restrained, my lord, and is being escorted to the yard. He'll be charged with the murder of Mr. Windbank and the stealing of government secrets. Very good. And you, Inspector. Regrettably, you will have to face charges yourself. Yes, my lord, of course. It transpires that you were complicit in helping a criminal escape justice. That fact remains whether or not you are doing so in that line of duty. The crime is a serious one, Inspector, and it's and inexcusable. Now to defend it, Miss Gina Lestrade. Ah, yeah? It is time for the final adjudication. Is the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Yes, sir. Garrett of Squadron, standing by, sir. This is really it now. Can also do the ending cutscene next time. No, 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 no. We're just finishing it now. Last push, the final call, the finishing whistle. My men are ready to deliver their verdicts. Because next time, I have to start with the second game of Create Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will now declare your final decisions to the court. Muzai. 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 Next time you start Danganronpa. <laughs> well, this weekend I'm busy, so I can't start it this weekend. Cause on Saturday I'm um, I'm watching Eternals, and Sunday I'm going to see family. Ha ha ha! That's the stuff I'm off the oak. Kirby and I are on the same wavelength. I do want to start Danganronpa, but I still have to finish Dragon Quest and Persona 5 Strikers, guys. I still have to finish those games. And then I want to play Voice of Cards, because that I realized that came out. I have so many games I want to play. 
Finally, Bruno, you finally managed to do it. Finally is the word. I really wasn't sure if we'd come out on top for a while there. I still have to finish that just he said. Oh my gosh! Cece was right. You're the best lawyer in the world. Miss Lestrade, I am not finished with you yet. Eh? What? What are you looking at me like that for? Before you start enjoying your freedom, there are certain other crimes to consider. Hmm? Eh? Two months ago, in my courtroom, no less, you gave false testimony, did you not? And in relation to the trial today, not only did you unlawfully enter Winderbank's pawnbrokery, you also attempted to abscond with Mr. McGilda's property, it seems. Eh? I never done nothing of the sort! Oh, this game actually cares about perjury, oh my. Of course not, it's not like you were gleefully wearing McGilded's coat in your cell yesterday or anything. Oh, just when I was getting excited by throwing a party for Ginny this evening. And turning our attention to the defense. Determining that, when played together, the music box disc contained a message in Morse code was... Well, it was certainly a most unexpected revelation, Council. Quite so, my lord. The prosecution was caught entirely off guard. In fact, I think we should applaud my learned friend's courage here today. I propose a toast. For real? To demanding that government secrets be disseminated before the entire courtroom. <laughs> Thanks. Ah. Uh, very sorry about that. It was the only way I could get the Inspector Gregson to admit to what he'd done, so... If I may say something on that point. Isn't that... It's, um, about the sounds produced by the music box before. I do wonder if that was really most recorded at all. What? What are you saying, madam? Oh, well, it's just that I'm really rather fanatical when it comes to Morse code, you see. So much so that the whole world seemed to be covered in dots and dashes to me, in fact. Goodness, madam. An unhealthy level of obsession, one feels. But I must say that, in my opinion, the sounds produced by those two discs... ...were nothing more than that. A meaningless series of two different tones. What? Can, can that really be? It wasn't Morse code after all? My lord, the defense would like to listen to the music box again. Are you off your nut? How many times do I have to tell you those discs contain ministerial secrets, sunshine? This courtroom is not an appropriate forum to discuss the nature of the government communications. We know McGilded conspired to trade national secrets with our enemies, secrets acquired from Mr. Graydon. Now that the man has admitted to his crimes, we have no need to pursue the matter further. We really don't. Let's get out of here. Oh, uh, but it's really going to bother me. Unless they were put in wrong. Oh, like the discs were in the wrong spot. Ah, yes, me lord. That which you have seen today here in this courtroom has been extremely disturbing. Falsified evidence, intimidation, perjury, a grim catalogue of depravity. An appalling experience to befall any child. Come on, it ain't nothing I didn't see most days in the back of slums. I beg your pardon? If you're weak, you pay for it. That's just how life goes. Gina. But look, I reckon I've worked something out today. The world ain't fair, but if you want it to change... You've got to start at home. You've got to change how you are yourself. Or the dad did something. Oh, the dad might have done something. Well, that's a very laudable lesson, I would say. I eagerly look forward to the born-again Miss Lestrade, never gracing my courtroom with her presence again. Now, with regard to the murder of Mr. Pop Windebank, the proprietor of a pawnbrokery business on Baker Street... I hereby declare the defendant, Mr. Gina Restrade. Not guilty. Still jail, though. Yeah, I feel like she's still going to jail for perjury. 
Yay, give me the fireworks. Yay. We caused a fire. Yay. Oh, you're a Japanese spy. <laughs> no! In the US, that's a felony. Oh, dang. I'm gonna hear it again. Mm, that is all. Court is adjourned. Please, let it end. No, fancy, because I don't want to talk to you. Get out of here. Why aren't I getting out of here? Let's just leave. Go. On a personal note, I must say you've surprised me, my Far Eastern friend. Ah, oh. We still have another hour to go. No, don't say that. I need it to be another 20 minutes only. Despite being a Nipponese, you sought through the pretense to malice that festered within that Englishman. Wow, you racist jerk! And at the same time, sought through the grime to the surprising heart of your English client. You have a curious talent for judging character, especially considering our very different cultures. Because people are the same everywhere, dude. Doesn't matter where you're from. There's good people and bad. I don't think there's any curi anything curious about it. Whether we're from the Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan, we're all human beings. We're not so very different on the inside. Exactly. You know, I took this case for one very simple reason. To lock swords with you once again, here in the courtroom. You did? When I encountered you for the first time two months ago, it reminded me. Looks like you all bleed red, huh? <laughs> of toasting friendship and trust with another Nipponese, only to find my trust betrayed. Through you, I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew and try to understand. Huh? Who did you know? You mentioned something similar earlier today, about total betrayal at the hands of the Japanese. What happened exactly? Well, you may ask. And one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer, whether you like it or not. Uh, you're not gonna tell me? Alright, then I'll wait for that day if I must. I- no, I don't- if you're not gonna tell me now, I don't care. Get out of here. Get me out of here. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey and my retirement from service five years ago. It gives me cause to wonder if our meeting has some deeper purpose. So, farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow. Until we meet again. I don't want to meet you again. No, no, no. <sighs> I'm done. No. Get me out of here. I want to go home. It's done. It's over at last. But... Where's Iris disappear to? Ah! Congratulations, Gina. I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Well, you did what you said, Mr. Naruto. You believed in me right up to the end. Irizawad is your name. What's that about it? I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? No one ever has before, see? Kept a promise, I mean. Properly. That's awful. I figured something out today. All my life, growing up in the slums, I've never trusted no one. But that's just because I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean, the more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. Yes, I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of it in that trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone, and paid for it. That betrayal left a big scar. You know though, Gina, I worked something out quite recently too. Trusting in someone else is really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. And when your gut tells you it's the right thing to do and your trust is rewarded, 
There's no better feeling in the world. I think I have you to thank for that. Reminding me of that valuable lesson. Oh, well, if you say so. Don't make me a fat don't make a fat lot of sense to me though. They drew her really cute. I guess so. Yeah, I guess she is cute. I'm trying to say that putting my faith in Eugenia has been a real pleasure. For crying out loud, pack it in. Well, I suppose. I sort of feel the same way. I mean, sometimes trust is someone else is, you know, alright. Good night, Smooth. Thanks for staying up so late. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Thanks. Kazuma! This is the way I see it, Yunosuke. Asogi! A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And it comes- and that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Totally forgot about this guy. I didn't! Kazuma! Am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer you believed I could be? Kazuma! I miss you! Pardon the interruption. You gotta go to jail. But what the deuce does a man have to, uh, to be noticed around here, my dear fellow? Oh, Sholmes, that voice. It's too late for that voice now, Mr. Nadahuru. I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. Ah ha ha, yes, it was me all along, I would have said when you finally noticed me. But you people, with your incessant babbling. Ah, Mr. Sholmes. Ah ha ha, yes, it was me all along, you see. <sighs> Hug this man. I'd assumed you'd taken, you'd been taken back to the hospital. To be honest, indeed I was. Yes, I agree too. They are babbling fools. That was a JoJo reference, was it? But I managed to escape again. Oh. I happen to be aware of one or two fo foibles of the doctor who was tending to me. I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily issued me with a leave of absence. How very above board. But enough of my adventures. It was me, Dio! <laughs> that was a fine victory, Mr. Nathoro. Your tireless efforts justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations are in order. As a close friend, I tip my hat at you. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> Some great detective you are. Great at being cold as ice, maybe. Have I hurt you in some way, Mr. Strahd? While you've been having a snooze in your nice soft bed, some of us have been fighting for our lives. Oh, well, that bullet did cause me to lose a substantial amount of blood, it's true. So I've indeed been feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but... Well, have a feel! Could you even take your hands off my neck, please, Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> and in some way, I suppose, congratulations are in order for you too, Mr. Strahd. What's that supposed to mean? Why so half-hearted? Well, naturally, it isn't my intention to alarm you, but... An acquittal in a trial with that particular prosecutor is perhaps a little precarious. Well done, Mr. Sholmes. No alarming in the slightest. Not alarming in the slightest. Oh, the Reaper, you mean? Because anyone who's found not guilty in a trial, he was working on minds of dead anyway. Is that it? The very point I was trying to make. As a by the fate of Mr. McGilded, in fact. Ah, but of course, I pay no attention to such irrational drivel myself. Okay, Tosi, going to bed. Fight on. Thanks, Artsy. Good night. Sleep well. Thanks for sticking around so late. I just want this to be done. Yeah, well, they don't bother me. Oh, really? Of course not. The way I see it, the Reaper's a bit like him upstairs. Him upstairs? You mean, like God? 
Yeah, I'm upstairs knows what's what, right? He knows what people are like on the inside. He won't have got the wrong end of the stick. There's some curves like that bog trotter who are rotten to the core. And at the end of the day, him upstairs makes sure they get what they deserve. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Can we just end? Just just end it! Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper is taking matters into his own hands and claiming lives is another. Well, I ain't like the gilders of the world, so I ain't scared. I got principles, see? Don't you know they still need to recap the entire trial over dinner and the last trial too? No, stop. Don't say that. I'm treating you which is to be admired, Mr. Strahd. Oi, just give it a rest, alright? As I was saying, congratulations are in order. You already said that. The news of your acquittal was very welcome news to me indeed. Let me express my heartfelt congratulations, Gina. Well, um, um... There you are, Hurley! How long have you been here? Honestly, I wanted to make an entrance especially to meet you there. Ah, oh, Iris, my dear. I do apologize. But wait until I tell you what happened. This pair made utter fools of themselves. What happens? As you know, I have a penchant for disguise. I was hiding in this room dressed as a bailiff. But these adults didn't notice my presence at all. Ah, ha, ha, they had no idea. Can you imagine, Iris? Would you credit it? Hmm. I'm not sure, really. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, Hurley, but you just don't have the weightly presence you seem to think you have. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's going to land you in trouble one day. I'll be careful. Ouch. Anyway, it's such a shame. I was so hoping to throw a party for Ginny tonight. But you won't be able to come, will you? Don't look like I'm going to be in the going nowhere for a while. You at the judges, Patter. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently. All of them offences. What was it again? Breaking and entering? Taking the box trotter stuff? What was in the log? Blah blah blah. Yes, I think you'll find that basically being a pickpocket is the main offence. But Darth ain't an offence. It's a job, ain't it? Don't think so. Wrap it up! Still got me thinking all this. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. I mean, you didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, Odo? Well, no. But I was never a pickpocket. Well, anyway, I reckon I can make a change. Just kill me now, I know. I'm gonna do something for all the not like me from the slums. Something that makes a difference for them. Like, I'm starting to lose the voices. I'm, I'm starting to not care. That's a wonderful idea, Ginny, and I'm sure you could do it. Heh heh heh. What is it? Nothing. Miss Gina Lestrade. Go to jail. Present carriage arrived, ma'am. Come with me to the rear gate at once. Right. Well, looks like I'm off then. Yes, goodbye, Gina, and good luck. Um, um, oh no. Yes? Uh, what was that for? I, um, I don't know. I mean... I don't know what to say, so... Ah, indeed. Perhaps the situation calls for a phrase hitherto missing from your vocabulary, Miss Lestrade. Eh. On occasion such as this... I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh. Oh yes. It's good advice, Ginny. I don't know what to say, so I'll just murder you instead. For real. Right. I see. Well... Thank you, Odo. Oh, thank you.
Thank you for everything what you've done for believing in me. Not at all. In fact, that should be my line. Thank you, Gina. My face is getting so oily. Ugh, I need to wash my face again. Ew, gross. Well, there she goes. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. What is that brown stuff on her eyes? <laughs> uh, it's it's raining. Well, 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 quite the indomitable pippus. Oh, I nearly forgot. I bought a paper outside. It's a special edition, and this trial is all over the front page. Pipbook is innocence proven. Isn't it wonderful? You should have shown it to Gina, Iris. She would have been thrilled. Oh no, how silly of me. Ah, but anyway, would you like the good news or the bad news? Uh, not again. Well, what do you say, Bruno? Hurley? As usual, I think I'd rather get the bad news added away first. Absolutely not. I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. And there you have it. How people answer that question says a lot about them, doesn't it? Let's not go there. Alright then, maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. It was a record level of rainfall, apparently. Well, I did not press that button, okay. Well, that is good news indeed. We can journey back in greater comfort. Alright then, what's the bad news? The huge storm has left seas very choppy. The channel in particular is awful, so sailing set to Dover have been delayed by a day or more. Wait, Dover? That's right, if we head to the station immediately... We may still make it in time to wave Susie off! Do 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 but but do there won't be a train surely we couldn't be that lucky who do you think I am Mr Nodhudu Mr Sholmes I rushed to Victoria Station earlier and made arrangements for a special express if we hurry now we shall be there in time for dinner and I know of a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked soul. I don't... The Great Detective does it again. Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of the rail transport director's foibles. What? I merely made my knowledge to them... Uh, knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily laid on the locomotive. Elementary. Oily toast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm feeling so gross. Just an idea, but it might be wise to stop manipulating people that way. Where's Nadal's girlfriend that he came with here? <laughs> She's um, on a ship back to Japan. Her dad is sick. What are we waiting for then? To London, Victoria! Susato-san, you helped me so much! Thank you, I'll see you again! Guess what? You're going to Japan too! Oh my gosh! That took somewhat longer than I had anticipated. Susie's boat must be about to leave now. Mr. Sato, where are you? Over there, look! It looks like she's reading something. Mr. Sato, wait! What are you doing? Mr. Mr. Naruhodo, what are you doing here? We came as soon as we could after the trial. I mean, we heard that the sailings were being delayed due to the bad weather, you see. Oh, I... I see. Then, then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? It... it went well. She was acquitted. That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. The book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your Encyclopedia of British Law, wasn't it? Oh dear, I was hoping you hadn't seen that. I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. 
So, I was saying my final farewell. You were saying goodbye to Law? You, Susasa-san? Would I be correct in assuming? It's because of the people, Miss Susato. I deliberately altered the scene of a crime, and then I tried to hide the facts. What I did is utterly unforgivable. That reminds me. How did you even come to have this, Izzy? On the evening of the incident, Mr. Sholmes had invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh yes, we had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave us a little introductory lesson, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, I mean. Oh, that was so much fun. I stole Runo's armband. Yes, please don't do that again, Iris. That band's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should pay more attention to it. You didn't go this far ages. On a whim, I thought it would be fun to see if I could take the cat flapper mat, so I put it up my sleeve. Really? And then I rather forgot about it until I found myself in Mr. Windebank's shop with it later that night. I see. And then... Bang. Ah. Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Sholmes. Leave me, Mr. Naruhoto. Right. I came to give you a spider kiss. <laughs> After Mr. Naruhoto had left the shop, I started to think. That door started to play on my mind. The storeroom door, you mean? What other door could it be, you freaking idiot? Yes, if Gina was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could only be behind the door. And at that moment, the little advice I had about Miss Lee stank to mind. I was worried about Gina, so I simply had to know. So, you used a cat flap on to make the people in the door. We established this. Why are you repeating it? I was captured in a photograph and picked up the shop. By one of Hurley's red handed recorders. Indeed, it was of the first importance at that point. Precisely when the people was made, that information would prove to me the start of Hurley's greatest weapon. Then, naturally, without proof, it would have been amounted to nothing. But when I looked through the hole in the door, the sight that met my eyes made my bowl of brown cold. Thoughts started to run through my mind. I remembered that two months later, the trial of Magnus Gildan. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to secure his freedom. It made British sisters real dark and sinister to me. And then the terrible thought occurred to me. What if... What if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked as if it exactly the which Gina saw Mr. Windebank. Even though I was sure she would never have done such a thing. You were worried that the true culprit would try to frame her for the crime. That's right. But then I realized... You thought I was joking when I said you had another hour left. Oh my god, I'm gonna shoot myself. It'll be very difficult for anyone to give false testimony in this case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened behind the door of a locked room. For someone to cl uh, claim falsely to have witnessed it, there would have to be a way to see beyond the door. Uh. For which? A people would be the very thing. Only the people I had made wasn't actually there until after the crime had become committed, of course. And the criminal wouldn't know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. But the possibility of rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? A trap. Is that why she did it? So, is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that you made the people to anyone, not even to the police. I know, I knew at the time what I was doing, a criminal offense. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Sholmes. If Mr. Dalarhor was completely backed into a corner with no other possible means of escape. The truth about the people could save him, that was my plan. She really does think of everything. But, but then... Why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight. If she had done that, it would have rendered you complicit in the whole escapade. Ah. Uh, you could have been disbarred if you had been, uh, if you had seen to have knowingly tampered with the crime scene. So Mr. Sussex decided to shoulder the burden of responsibility alone. 
For your sake and Mr. Strahd's. Mr. Sato. The truth is, when it happened, I did it because... I'd lost a little of my faith in the law. Oh. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convicted of the crime. But the moment I allowed myself to think that... is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. What you did isn't comparable, comparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied in the witness stand using the people as a way to implicate Gina. And besides, if the people inconsistency hadn't existed, I'm not at all sure that she would have been acquitted in the end. Mr. Sato, what you did saved Gina's life. Well, with your kind words, Mr. Naruhoro, you saved me from you saved me too from my regrets. Well, we must all be thankful that Mr. Strahd's freedom has been assured. Yes, exactly. Although some of the loose ends in the trial will continue to play on my mind, I'm sure. But the revelation that the music box does contain secret messages, Naruhoro. What a triumph to work that out. I'm full of admiration. Well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Oh, it wasn't? There was a communications officer among the jury members, you see. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the desk were just meaningless tones. As one would expect, after all, we are talking about secret government communications. No doubt they were written in cipher to avoid being readily understood should they have been intercepted. In cipher, I see. So then we could never have hope to understand the message. Whatever, I don't care. Nonsense, my dear fellows, it's quite a zero pipe problem, I assure you. A. So. Asogi? What? Well, that can't be a real word, can it? How funny! Wait, Iris, what did you say? Oh, um, I just said Asogi. Does that word mean something to you? Mean something? Asogi was the name of my best friend. What? But how? How do you know that name, Iris? I wrote it down during the trial before, when the message was playing on the music box. She transcribed it on the fly? She really is a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out and play Morse code, so I tried various ways to interpret it. But whenever I tried, the words just didn't seem to make any sense. That is, in English at least. Oh. It suddenly occurred to me, you see. There's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world have altered and added Morse code to use it in their own languages. I don't believe it. Are you saying? That's right. I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before. But I think it's based on the Iroha program, isn't it? And you mean to say that in Japanese Morse code the message says Asugi? Jelly alert, the mansion of handsome man for me I'm just like, what? Yes, I think so. Sorry, but I don't remember all the Japanese Morse code. Iris, would you let me see that? Mr. Sato, do you know it? Do you know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Because I'm quite sure Morse code will become ever more important for international communications. Then might I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version. Be that as it may, Iris, show me the message, please. Of course. But, but what can this possibly mean? Whatever it is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless dots and dashes. It's made the color dream from Susan's face. There's no doubt that this message is written in Japanese Morse code. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for its secret communications. I don't understand the reason why, but the message appears to be a list of four people's names. Four names? The first is K. Asugi. Kazuma. Why? Why was his name on that disc? 
The second is an A Shin. Shin? I don't recognize that name. The third is T Gregson. Tobias Gregson. Ah, it would seem Tobias Gregson is the third man on this list. And what is his name doing on a secret government communication as well? And the last name. What's the matter, Mr. Soto? It's... it's just so strange, so unexpected. Oh, what is it, Susie? Don't keep us in suspense. The last name is J. Wilson. What? Wilson? John H. Wilson? You mean, Daddy? It says only J. Wilson, so I'm afraid I can't be sure. Then, after the four names, it reads, if I translate from Japanese, that is all four. And that's the end of the message. Or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. I just can't believe it. Who would ever have thought that those discs contained Japanese Morse code? Not to mention the strange list of some disturbingly familiar names. It would appear that this particular message is a communication of some kind of... of some kind between Great Britain and the Empire of Japan. So, Daddy could be in Japan then. Where's Susie and Runa come from? Oh, well, he's dead. <laughs> hmm, no, it's not very likely really, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson, and there must be lots of chase among them. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. But we can't tell Iris about that now, we just can't. This is so strange, somehow, in solving the case of Mr. Windemang's murder today. I feel like I've rolled back a boulder at the mouth of a very dark cave. I do wonder... If perhaps... It's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. Is this what the sequel is? Finding out why the four names are on the list? Who -onk. <laughs> Oh dear, the ship is going to set sail soon. Yes, it seems so. I'll sail on that steamship first to the port of Dunkirk in France. Dunkirk! Then I'll change to a larger passenger vessel bound for, bound for Japan. You're really going then, Susie. Can we just shut up and end this? <laughs> like, can we just end? We wish you very safe passage, Mrs. Ado. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. I mean, finding about the four names in the Morse code message was amazing, Mrs. Ado. But like, can we end this now? I'd hope to have you always at my side to guide me and support me. Mr. Naruhodo. Please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. I'm... I'm quite sure. I'll be back before you know it. Really, Susie? Oh, now don't forget, Iris, I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise? About your manuscript? Ah! Oh. Oh yes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. A promise is a promise. Definitely, Iris. Bye. Mr. Naruhodo. Yes? Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, of course. On the SS Buria, when I was dragged out from that wardrobe still half asleep. If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with the scissors of takedown. You know very well what I'm talking about after that. It's strange, but being thrown together as we were in that case, I somehow felt straight away. That you were the perfect person to continue Kazuma-sama's great legacy. Mr. Sato. When my instincts were right, 
I really want to believe. No, I'm sure of that. I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. Bye. Bye. Get out of here. Bye. Credits roll and bye. これで。なるほど、龍之介。最初の冒険の物語は これからもきっと様々な困難が僕を待ち受けているのだろう。でも、どんな危機だって大逆転できる。そんな気がする。だって僕には世界最高の仲間がいるのだから。You don't have Kazuma anymore. You don't have Asogi. And Susan is going back to Japan. So, what friends do you have left? <laughs> no, no. Ah, yes, Mr. Narohodo. Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have some rather awkward news. The railway company has decided to sue over the Special Express train, apparently. Huh? such a commotion on the line, all the other trains had to wait at stations. But really, we would never have made it to Dover in time otherwise. Anyway, I explained everything and how it was all your fault. Huh? Huh? I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Mr. Sato, you love defending yourself in court. Huh? Huh? It's all right. I'm perfectly happy to testify. He really didn't look like the sort of man who do something so outrageous. See? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Yes? A word, if you don't mind. Why, certainly. Any word you like. Bellow it out, my dear fellow. Oh yes, I love Bruno's words, and I know just the one he'll use here. Then, I really must say... Objection. We did it! We're done! Oh my gosh, now credits play. Just in case there's like extra scenes or something. Ugh. Like, how dare they leave that cliffhanger of the list of four names? But, true, we don't know which exactly, exactly which Jay Wilson it is. We, and I'm hoping that T. Gregson, something was afoot. They were transpired, I ordered them all myself, so I advertised them for sale with used by Mr. Sholmes to solve an important case. I missed the first line, damn it, and the money I've earned consulting detective work pays a pittance by comparison. Who's A Shin? I don't think I met any other Asian people. Ah, oh, I haven't slept a wink. This manuscript is due tomorrow now. When I'm this busy, Hurley usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement for some dry toast and ins insipid coffee. I do miss Susie and her lovely Japanese breakfasts. We're done. Oh my gosh. Witness, your testimony is riddled with contradictions. Exactly. Rarely do rare Koban coins hide under rare stakes in themselves. Well, I don't know, son. Knows his father is an innocent man. Or are you calling my son a liar? Witnesses, my courtroom is no place for your petty arguments.
I need to wash my face, I need to brush my teeth, I need to get in my bed and play some Animal Crossing. Having delivered the Russian dancer to shore in Shanghai, I laid low on the steamship for a while. But last night, I apprehended an extremely suspicious Japanese national on board. I've done nothing wrong! All I did was give Wagahai's offspring refuge in my pocket. A man brings some kittens on board and suddenly he's a hardened criminal. It's not fair. <laughs> Should I open Animal Crossing after your stream? Past 2 a.m.? Yes. <laughs> Uh. Scientific investigation will be the gold standard for policing in a new age. I dream of a world governed by the tenets of order and discipline. Like a great clock, in fact, whose hundreds of parts mess together in perfect unison. You're a bad influence. I am. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have but two minutes and 37 seconds for my next appointment. Oh my gosh, are we going to see, like, all the people from the old tri trials? No, just, can we... <laughs> the latest France magazine is out, and I'm in it again. Whenever I say that one line she wrote now, I get a standing ovation. Wanna hear it? Hmm. Not bad, I suppose. For an amateur. Amateur. Glug, glug, glug. We'll even see that old man who died in that carriage accident. <laughs> Her ladyship put me to shame. That would be creepy, man. Also, shouldn't this guy be in jail for perjury or faking evidence? He should be. Been visiting the old girl on a daily basis, of course. Jody, my old jailbird. Must say, battling with those bally stairs every day has done wonders for the dicky peg. Managing rather well with the housework, too. Got this maid business taped up, I say. Hope the gossiping neighbors don't realize the man of the house is his own maid. Or abiding a uh, murder or something. Definitely for, um. Yeah, for making a deal. Malfeasance. That was it. My release, back on the beat again. All thanks to the Reaper. There's nothing I enjoy more these days than hunting out small change in the gutter. I'm a better Bobby now, looking out for Londoners, their dropped halfpennies, halfpennies, and my lovely wife. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Patrolly. Looks like I'm going to be doing time for a bit now. But Iris comes every day for a nap, so it ain't too worn. She's always going on about all them case what Shons is looking into. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting when you get into them. If there isn't a scene of, like, Asogi later, man, this was all not worth it. <laughs> Yes, I renounced my upbringing and chose a life of sophisticated crime. But regrets? Please. Give her a broth, that ain't the Ashra used to know. We got time here to plan the comeback of Milverton and Skulk and Milkrun, right? The three Muscoatsets. Milk in the neighborhood for all it's worth. Oh my gosh, play the JoJo music. Uh, wow, I can't think of it in my head right now. Probably because I'm hearing um, the Naruhodo music. Looked like Kita for a sec. This past six months have been a time I shall remember forevermore. Painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I've come to realize that's what life is all about. naruhodo san I promise. Your assistant will return to you one day. But for now, I leave you with many memories and a heartfelt wish that life will treat you well. Yoshikage Kira? I don't know who that is. The only Kira I think of um, is Gundam Seed Kira. Oh no, wait, there's Death Note Kira also. Okay, so there's two Kiras I think of. 
Oh, that's a cute picture. Oh, That's really cute. Watch part 8 of JoJo? Dude, I haven't watched any part of JoJo. <laughs> I don't think I got the achievement for case five, which means I have to go back and find it. <gasps> that villa is great, like generally good thriller. Oh, I didn't listen to any of the English voices. I'm sorry, dudes. That girl totally forgot what her oh wait Brett something Brett and I was like I don't know what her name is a pun for did we ever find out what was this lady's deal no we didn't yeah that's something we didn't find out like what was her deal she's still important right I think so because she just flipped out and it was just like okay you killed him but I felt like there was something more to her. Asogi, you better not stop walking with him. <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, he stopped walking with him. No! Come back! Come back! Wait! Come back! No! Kazuma! No! Oh, now I get the sword. Oh my gosh. They didn't want to show him. They didn't want to animate him putting on the sword, so they had them go off screen. <laughs> Smart. He was leading, but now you are leading. Yep. And I have his sword. Also, that's when he died and left the story. So this is gonna take forever. <laughs> yeah! It's gonna be another 30 minutes. <laughs> because I bet they're gonna have another scene after the end of the credits. And I'm going insane. I'm so tired. I just wanna wash my face. <sighs> please. Please. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. I need to touch my controller. Yo, why is Susato walking behind Sholmes? She's closer to me than Sholmes is. And then we gotta see Gina, and then we gotta see Pop, and then we gotta see... The, the dudes. We gotta see Van Zeeks. Maybe Van Zeeks we'll see at the end. Nope, he's right here. There's Gina. My back hurts, can I lie down? <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> oh 
I gotta upload this to YouTube too, so that's gonna take some time to process. Or I'll just do it tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'll just do it tomorrow. I don't want to stay up for the uploading. Even though I'll be up anyway playing Animal Crossing. I don't know, whatever. I don't want to be sitting at my desk anymore. I'm tired. Cute! <gasps> Did you <laughs> Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Fiend! I've done it. I have become a summoner. Oh! This is beautiful! Oh! I should have taken a screenshot on my Switch. Oh, I'm a fool. I am a fool. I should have taken a screenshot. Oh. Oh, maybe it's in the gallery. <sighs> so is there a continue? No, I'll find out next time. I don't want to like accidentally continue something and have the second game start. Because this this is the this is both games, so. Yeah, I did it. We we finished the first part of Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, which is actually the first game. So now we have the second game with another five cases. So yay. So on Tuesday, I'll be starting that. And then whenever I have a free um, weekend day, um, I will be streaming Danganronpa. And then, yeah, after I finish this game, I will finish Dragon Quest and Persona 5 Strikers, whenever that happens. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. I finished it. Yay. Thanks for the hugs, Regal. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>